you can buy it now? I no, I don't think you can buy it now. Not yet. Uh, yeah, I think you have to wait on that. It's a preview. Wait, are we actually streaming? We are actually streaming. Oh, okay. Then why isn't it there? Because I did not refresh it yet. Oh my goodness. You're just, just confusing me. I'm sorry. Uh, this is not my intention. It's all good. It's all good. I presume that's why it's not up there. Yeah. All right. What up, everyone who's going to join us in a few seconds? What Either... up, everyone who's not here yet? <gasps> Ooh, DC six one light. Watch. Oh, it's me. It's we. What's our theme song? Uh, what is our theme song? Is that it? channel is not appropriate anymore because I, I had the channel before i met you oh did you well yeah can you, change it. Name, can you name can you rename channel i think so if you wanted to i think so yeah. we'll change it to obsidian digs plus well what's up no name so like you're about to start playing classical guys <laughs> okay for you that's a request <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard? <laughs> oh, the name did a cool wordplay. Ah. Sounds hard. <laughs> Sounds hard. So, the name says, I just want no say. Sorry, I fell apart. If you dig Chrissy, Chrissy digs you too. Yeah. That's the fun thing about, my, like, digs, digs, digs. I thought, oh yeah, it's like, my name works as a noun and a verb, yeah. so it's funny. And here's the object and the subject. Mm -hmm. Digs, digs, digs. But, um, digs, digs, Kurt. Digs, digs, Kurt? That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Or how about digs plus one? I'm your plus one. No, yeah. does that have as much impact? Mm -hmm. No, 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 you like this? Okay, okay. Well, it's up to you. Whatever you want to change. Whatever you want to change. Yeah. We'll see. Well, anyway. Right, I'll, I'll price that one. No name. This uh, console guest has a... I used to be able to play, play it really well, but it's, it's a hard one to just bust out if you haven't played it in a while, which I haven't. Sounds like... <laughs> no. uh, Dumb and fine. Oh. 
Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, No Name. Uh, that serious guitar skill. It's a funny thing, because I play a lot of guitar, and mm. I play a lot of different instruments. Uh, but then I also, you know, as a musician, I know guys are way better than me in different ways. Mm. And I really admire those guys. But I can also do things that they can't necessarily do either. It's right? just like all art, right? Like Yeah, we all have our things. Everyone says, oh, Chrissy, you're good at art. But when I look at my art, I think of other people who I think are better than me. It's just... But you do th- certain things really great. Yeah. And, and awesome. And, and they're beautiful. Like, uh, again... So so we just got the, we literally got this the sweat like an hour got ago it this a morning. sample and I'm like fucking vibing it. It super looks so hard. good. I'm <laughs> really actually genuinely impressed with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I love, love these like all over like like yeah. it's this knit. It's like a full knit sweater yeah, yeah. and it's nice because these kind of sweaters are like they're lightweight. Like so you can wear them around like springtime. It's like really nice. So it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. I get chilly all the time. So I'm always like I need a sweater of some kind. Yeah. But it's yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't just an ad because Chrissy made it. This is uh, I'm very we're very happy with it. This is new to I us. I genuinely too, so. love all of the sweaters that I make through this company so yeah. far. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I think you know. So not just Amico Bust Out Classic Glass. So be proud of myself. Yeah. Um, oh, we got it too. I'll make sure it gets cleaned up sometime in the future. Oh boy, and then it's the, great. We also got a YouTube share. So also oh. best version of Despacito. Give Shani some exposure. Despacito. Oh, is this the um? Let's hear. Let's let's, let's get. Do you want some? Mm-hmm. I remember when this is. Oh, this is Despacito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone loves this song. I don't have an opinion about the song. I just I just know it was super popular. Yeah. It was everywhere for a minute. I used to play in a karaoke band. We used to play it, and that it got the chord dance. Is it always Spanish? Is there a, no, there's, is, an, there's an English version? Or wait, no, I'm, I'm asking. Is there a Spanish and an English version? I believe so. Yeah. I think there's a version. There's a version without Justin Bieber that's all Spanish. So it's like a a mix, a remix. Yeah. Oh no, I forgot to post on Twitter. It's hard to do live streams. Looks like she's in California. Is she in California? Where's she at? This looks like Santa Monica to me, or Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah, so is the. Uh... Oh, it's so long. So I'm lazy at night. Shooting by ear. Something crazy did. This is Chrissy Despacito. Mm, yeah? You just change it, change whatever you want it. But the only rule is you have to say Despacito in the chorus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We are going outside to eat burritos. I don't want to go out to eat burritos. But everybody says they want to eat burritos. Despacito I would rather prefer to eat that taquitos I prefer the tiny, tiny, tiny taquitos But everybody says no, no, Chrissy, eat a burrito Despacito I don't wanna eat taquitos Anymore I want some nachos I don't even care if they aren't that spicy I don't really need to eat anything I just wanna go outside and see my friends do it again. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know how this song goes. <laughs> so I'm just making up words now. It's coming out like Jamaican. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it turned into Jamaica. I mean, the like islands part. doing what you like. Yeah, yeah we are going to the beach and we are going sailing. We're gonna eat some lovely taquitos with my friends. They are. Despositos, yeah, Jaman, we're gonna go to the islands and with their anti sharks. Don't look out in the water, there are jellyfish there. I'm a little scared of the jellyfish there. They sting really hard, and I heard that it hurts. I do not like jellyfish in the water, so I will stay on the beach. No, 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 I do not want to get stung by a Despacito. Yes. <laughs> is that the name of a, a stingray named Despacito? Oh no. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Better than morning inspiration. <laughs> Yeah, so so Nani didn't like it hurt everywhere. He didn't like it until Shani's cover, and you knocked she knocked out. But yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> She's beautiful voice. You know, you know. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was vaguely, nah, yeah, pro Mexican food is good. That's, that's I good. Yeah. love Mexican food. There must be another song that has this chord progression. I don't know why I get Jamaican. If there's something about it, reminds me of like reggae. Oh, oh yeah, it's just the uh, the syncopation. Like mm. the reggae group is always syncopated on the upbeat. We out here on the island Smoking weed and feeling excited day. The sun is really beautiful today I don't know what to say about that But yeah, we are yeah. On the beach we all did hardy We gonna take it to Hanada Live on today hey, hey. I like the way the sun hits your face hey, It takes me into outer space Yeah Stella Beauty, you are a cutie, and I wish that I could sail away. Out on the galaxy's beautiful starlight. Hey, hey. oh, into Stella Lava. Hey, you got a three body problem, <laughs> but I don't see no problems with your body. Hey, yeah. oh, hey, hey. How you do that? I can't do it at all. You just, you trill your, can you go? I cannot. How do you do that? You can't do that. I cannot. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to Basically, you put your tongue in the middle of your mouth. Yeah. Or no, sorry. You make like a U shape. Like like a space. Not hard, soft. Yeah, yeah. And you blow. I cannot do that. I think because I have this weird thing in my tongue. It's like long. No. I, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me see. Let me get in there. Let me get in there. Let me get in there. <laughs> no, my tongue doesn't go that far back. Oh. Can yeah. I see that thing? Uh, it's like up yeah. higher maybe. Yeah, yeah. Ever since I was a kid, I had this weird thing in the bottom of my tongue. It's so you like can't long. roll your tongue? No, I have to cut off. Mm. I have to cut off that piece under my tongue. So like weird what sound does a, what does sound does a pigeon make? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I cannot. <laughs> I can't do any of those sounds. Can you guys? Well, that's how I make well, a oh, We got a first time chatter. What, what? A, what a bit of streaming. Bit of streaming. So bit of streaming. As a first time chatter, you get a song. You so get a song, bit of streaming. Let's so do it. So we're going to do it in a choose a letter, Chrissy. What letter should be? B. And B, sure. B for bit of streaming. All right. Bit of streaming, you speak Spanish. I will never speak. Thank you for reminding me <laughs> of another thing I'll never do well. That's I'm what sorry. I, that's what I need. <laughs> Wait, I was just, I've never met anybody who couldn't do that is all. That's all. Oh, I didn't know that about you. Bit of, yeah, no, it's just because my weird tongue. So mm-hmm. Bit of Streaming said, oh, and Noni, thank you for welcoming a Bit of Streaming to the yes, stream. Yes, welcome. I got a tune. That's a cute way of selling tune, of, of spelling tune. Tune? Tune, tune yeah. Mm. Uh, and 
and yeah, you got the you got the emoji game on. That's a nice. Ooh, what yeah. is that thingy? I can't tell. It's far is away. That, is that a person with like popsicles? Uh, and Venus Streaming says that was fantastic. They've never been sung into a stream before. <sighs> you will not be sung into many streams. I don't no, this think. is a this is a original thing that we do here only yeah, yeah. exclusively. But yeah, so invite your friends if they want to sing. Um, I think, like, because even if you go to, like, a song with, a, like, a streamer, like, often a lot of streamers, like, they're producers or whatever. Right. And they're too good to do that. I'm not above, we're not above. We're not above singing to our new streamer, or new chatters. Yeah. We're trying to reach the, the point where it's not feasible anymore. That's our goal. We want to get to the point where I'm exhausted because there's just, like, too many people and I can't, like, sing about it anymore. No, because you can always do a thing where, like, you stream. You can do a marathon. It's fun. No, or you sing when people, like, do a subscription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, just yeah, change yeah, the yeah, milestone. So. So, yeah, we're, we're okay. But for now, yeah. everyone gets a song. Also, Bit of Streaming cannot roll their R's either. And oh. nice, yeah. I mean, I think you'll speak Spanish or Polish. You can speak Spanish or Polish. You'll just do it poorly like me, I think. Sure. You just have an accent. Yeah, I just, whatever. You know. So, I, can you say the alphabet in Spanish? I cannot. I, I took French in... Wait, you don't know it or you can't? I, I don't even know it. A, B, C, C, D, E, H, I, J, H, K, L, R, M, N, O, P, Q, R, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, Oh, that's pretty good. Can you do the it? Alphabet in... is easy to learn. Can you do it in uh, what's it called? Speak, huh? Um, uh, I don't know. It had a different rhythm. A B C D E G I can't do it. Again? <laughs> yeah. Because I associate it with the song. I don't know how to do it like independently. It's weird. Is that about the song? Is is different? A B C C D E H I J K L M N O P Q R R T. Too fast. No, well, you're pretty fast there. W X Y Z. I don't speak. Alphabet is easy to learn. Yeah, so it really says that if I can't roll my R's, don't worry, it can be learned. So I'm hoping I can learn it, but I've been trying. And, like, for whatever reason, my tongue. So. You can't see it on the street, but like most people's tongues, like the thing, whatever. Yeah, you call I it. can draw it. Underneath. I forget what it's called. Look at what that's called, because I'm curious. So what, like, this is cursed what tongue from the profile view. Is the flesh? This little thing <laughs> under your tongue called. This little thing. The lingual frenulum is a full decision that helps to anchor and stabilize your tongue. Yeah. It's important for many things, including speech and eating. So. So like yours is like this. Yeah, mine is really long. Like towards the tip of your tongue. Uh, yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But mine, so. mine is, like, I think, like, yeah. this. So I have, like, extra tongue space. You have extra tongue space, yeah. Yeah. It gives me a kind uh, yeah, yeah, I do, for, totally. Yeah. This is so weird, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it gives me, like, a weird, it gives me a lisp, too. Oh, maybe. Maybe, I, maybe yeah, that's they, why you have, like, you just have, like, less, like, tongue flexibility. Yeah, exactly. Overall, because yeah. it's, like, at the higher end of your that's tongue. That's right. That's no. interesting. So strange, yeah. So mm. just letting you guys all know that that's one of my weird things. So that's a weird thing about me. Another weird thing about me is my double joint here. I have a double joint here. Yeah. My finger. Like that that makes the kids. Well, this part, I'm double joint here. Yeah, I can do that. No, no, no. Just like, whoop, it clicks out. No, no, on this part. It doesn't click out. Mine clicks out. Okay, it's the same thing. It doesn't click, but it's uh, like... Well, maybe, man. Yeah, maybe you happen to be double jointed in the same part. I am double jointed. People told me that all the time. What so. is your weird thing about yeah, your Yeah, tell us about yourself. What's your, What's your weird, weird thing like... That you could you could share and yeah. it's also... If okay. you're not self-conscious about it, you don't have yeah, to. If it's something like... that you can talk about with people, yeah, yeah please share your weird thing. Uh, so, you're totally not weird. feeling underneath your butt, your tongue. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody, like, right now is, like, checking. Yeah. Can oh. you do this? Can you do this? I cannot do that. See? No, no, don't worry. I'm going to get to it right now. So, I, just, I missed that song song. My apologies. Uh, and that thumb trick is class. Thank you. Hold on. So we have some Sonic Ska. Let's check this out. Sonic Ska? Escape from the City. Let's check it. Check it. Do you listen to any... So yeah, when we went to uh, MagFest, there was like a, uh, a bunch of bands mm, yeah. uh, a lot playing Sonic. People love playing Sonic music. Oof. They're like singing too? I never got into like... Oh yeah. This no. makes sense. This is already kind of a ska song, so I'm not surprised. Do they make up the words for it? No. What game is this from? Uh, I think it's from Sonic 06. I could be wrong though. I don't. I don't know. I don't know 3D Sonic so good. Am I right? Is it Sonic 06? I 
rolling around at the speed of sound. Oof, that's cool, Gordon. Sonic is such an interesting, like... Dude, that song's a bop. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's an interesting property, interesting musical... It's, like, interesting to me because it has such a deep fan base. But I feel like it's really hard to pin down what Sonic is about. Sure. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of... Um, it changes a lot, right? Like, it... It started as a game that was talking, like, my impression of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it just starts as a platformer, and so they didn't have the resonance, and then they start to put the resonance on top mm -hmm. of it, but, like, the story and the flavor. Yeah. But they don't always align, because the important thing is, like, the... The... The game The experience of it, right? Yeah. Like, the visceral experience of being, like, this fast this fast creature king, yeah. Moving, yeah. Similar to Mario. Like, it doesn't make sense he's a fucking plumber. <laughs> no... But, so, I mean, except for the pipes. The pipes are a thing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there are elements. And he has, like, you know, he has, like, overalls like a plumber would do. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, but a lot of it comes from, like, just the, the limitations of the hardware, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, they had, that. like, okay, yeah. here's a few pixels. Make a story. Whatever. Got a... Oh, hold on. I want to make sure I get this. So, third rates are really good, but have zero exposure, which makes you sad. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to play... They should play, uh, definitely play MagFest. They're good. Like, they oh, sound yeah. Like a huge... I wonder, have they ever played MagFest? Yeah. They might be new. They're like 2022, so... Oh, yeah. um, let's yeah. see. If they, if they don't know about it, I mean, surely they know about it, right? Like, yeah, if you're a connection with them, they should... Uh, they must be aware of it, but... I feel like you can't, like, like game music and perform game music and not know about MagFest, right? Like... Mm -hmm. But, no, they're good. I mean, that, that, was a, that was a great, great arrangement for that. Um, and let's see, well, you've got a beard, so it's not a party trick so much these days, but you've got a super elastic chin. That's you know, super no, elastic what, chin. So, like, you're saying that, like, it can move, like, like stretch out, your chin stretches out? I can't even imagine. <laughs> can't that's even funny. Imagine that. that's, that's gnarly. He got them chin yeah. stretches. So, so, and that song was from, have you played, you played Sonic Adventure 2? Mm -mm. Okay. I so. haven't played any, the only 3D Sonic game I ever played was Sonic 3D Blast. <laughs> and it was the last 3D Sonic game I ever played. <laughs> Because that game sucks. And there's people who like that game, but I remember begging my parents for that game, only to be <laughs> severely like... disappointed by that game. Because you know, like back then, 3D was like this exciting, like new thing, right? Like three dimensions. What is that like? Yeah. And yeah. apparently, the game. <laughs> it's like we all live in three dimensions, but you know. yeah, I know, right? Can't imagine like fantasy three dimensions. It's so weird. On a screen. Yeah. It was a weird time, uh, like a, an interesting transition. Now 3D is so ubiquitous, like... And people, like, crave 2D stuff. Right. It's less real. It's it's more abstracted, right? Yeah. Like platformers and stuff. That's where all this, like, nostalgia for sprite art and stuff comes from. It's like... I, honestly... As beautiful as Final Fantasy VII Remake was, is... I found myself not really paying attention to how pretty it was sometimes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, sense. it's so pretty that you don't even look at it that much. It's kind of like real life, like too real life. Like, sure, sure. It just kind of blends into the background. But sometimes the abstraction of things, cartoons, videos, mm. whatever, that can make it more memorable. Right. right? It, it like helps you hyper focus on it. And it reduces the elements to cons to, to important constituent parts, mm. I think. Like here's a here's a thought experiment. Okay. Close your eyes. Yes. And Do imagine it. the uh, song in the Lion King, uh, what's it called? I'm gonna be a mighty king. Uh, I'm gonna be a gonna be a mighty king. I just can't wait to be king. Imagine that sequence. Yeah. In your head. You see the colors, right? I do. I do. You see the vivid, like, like all the stripes and, and like the oranges and the blues. The flowers, sure, and the bird flag and, and and passing around. Right. Yeah. Very vivid, yes. right? Now, close your eyes. Do the same thing for the 2019 The Lion King. Well, it's just like a, a lion running through. It's a the lion, lion, right? The lion running through a forest. It's yeah. just it's fine, yeah, but yeah. it's not like magical or like special. And sure. if any, if I had any like complaint about modern video games, it's that like. With all of the tools and like possibility, everyone's so hyper focused on realism yeah. that they're forgetting about style, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because like a thing is we didn't have the technology to make things realistic, mm -hmm. and so decades, even arguably the arts in general, right? Mm -hmm. Like like people worked so hard to make things realistic, mm -hmm. and it's a, 
like millennium to <laughs> yeah to, like, to literally get, to, get to get to that there. level have you and, seen medieval cat paintings <laughs> dude <or laughs> have horses, you seen those or horses <laughs> yeah. yeah horses if you uh, do yourself a favor look at pictures of horses from the middle ages and they just didn't know how to do perspective <laughs> just didn't know what the fuck yeah. uh that's funny i wonder if i can google that hold yeah, on i'm yeah. curious uh hold on i'll make sure we get to the chat um, yeah go ahead uh so let's see here so got places to go gotta follow that rainbow you know, so you uh, <laughs> is that is that is that the song reference? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. The one. <laughs> okay, so British Street, you can't stretch out. That's so that's so weird, man. I, that's interesting. Please, I, I if you ever had to take a video of that, please share it with the stream. Also, forgot your name. Please remind me and that chat. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, if you want to share share what you're comfortable sharing, that's important. Share um, what you're comfortable sharing. And bit of streaming. So there's very little 3D in Sonic 3D Blast. The Dragon Cut, though, is a lot better. Sonic 3D Bl- no name says Sonic 3D Blast had amazing bonus stages on Saturn. That's all you'll say about the game. <laughs> Sat- I never had a Saturn. I remember... Me either. Oh, there was like, was it, there was like a... Was it Dra- Legend of Dragoon or something? Oh, or something? yeah. Sure. That game was gnarly. I wanted to play that super bad or have that. But yeah, see. It. Here uh, we are. Bit of streaming, 2019 Lion King, off the tech demo for sure. And Noni says, I thought the Lion King remake was okay, but I didn't care for the original, so take that with a grain of salt. Ah, okay, um, well, you don't count. <laughs> no Chrissy offense. is a huge... This is my first Lion favorite King. anything, so I have, a, I have a special place in my heart for this. It's like how my son is watching Turning Red. And, oh, yeah, no, so no. look at this horse. <laughs> They're like, you can draw a horse from the front, right? Uh, like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I got it, no problem. <laughs> and you have to think because you know it makes sense because it's not like he can draw with a horse in front of him yeah easily right he had artist. to do it from memory so he's and like yeah okay memory. well they're like this shape is you know um i also really love oh him. me i'm kurt <laughs> oh you yeah you're kurt sorry <laughs> yeah yeah i'm kurt so uh see that's why your name should be in the thing I don't um know. the important thing is chrissy diggs i can't spell so like her. I can't spell medieval. So I asked my I dad why. why he named me Kurt once, and he said he just liked the name. Sure. Uh, and my little brother's named Keith. And then years later, I discovered that there was a time when he moved to America from the Philippines that Kurt Rambis and another player named Keith were playing the Lakers. So I'm just convinced that we were named, named after, after Lakers you. players. Yeah. Is this what? Are these? These are medieval cats. Are they really? Yeah. <laughs> you never seen these? No, I haven't. Yeah, they're pretty funny. <laughs> is this not, like is another thing because they didn't have reference photos so like I guess they couldn't like so. keep the cat there to draw it <laughs> it's just funny people oh, yeah. I like that Kurt's baby Kurt's baby is my new nickname in the chat Kurt's baby Chrissy and Kurt's baby let's go Kurt's baby KB I have another like weird nickname in Nagoya I like Kurt's baby I don't mind that Colonel Kurt's baby dude what is up with that one <laughs> this one or this what one. Oh, well, the one, the one on the right's fucked up, but the one on the left is like. like I a like Joker. this one. I feel like I should make something out of that. What is this? He's like in a he's like in a snail shell. All right, this here's our. Can we do it? Oh, it's AI. Boo! Get out of here. Is that, oh, yeah, I don't like that. Thing. God damn it, AI! You ruin everything. Yeah, that's not fun anymore. It's not fun if humans didn't come up with it. <laughs> then he says that cat looks how how no name feels. <laughs> That's a, that could be a fun drawing challenge. You should draw, you should draw a horse from the front from memory. <laughs> okay, I think I can do that. You think you do better than a medieval drawing? I think I can do better than a medieval drawing. Can you? All yeah. right, that's gonna be our first. That's okay. Gonna be our first challenge today. I can I so, can draw better than a medieval person for sure. So so another thing we do on this chat, if you're if you're new to the stream or on the stream, if you're new to it, is Chrissy will do three minute draw challenges, <laughs> where she has to. We don't necessarily have to do now when she's ready. But she'll do a three-minute draw challenge of something from memory. Sometimes, often it's a character, which is how we came up with such uh, stream luminaries as Danil. Danil, Duck, and Shrook, which we can show you later. Shrunk. <laughs> Shrunk and Danil. Uh, but, you know, stuff like this, too. This fun. I forgot what Goofy was called. Guffy. Guffy. Guffy and Danil. Guffy and Danil. Today I'm drawing. A beautiful, beautiful elf man. I think this was technically a fairy, but I'm not drawing it anyway. Do you like fairies? What are your opinions on fairies? Have you ever seen a fairy? Do you 
you think that fairies are real in your heart? Do you think that fairies are real? Do you think a fairy would tear you apart? Oh, I heard that fairies aren't as nice as people imagine them to be. I heard that they could be vicious if they tend to be. I heard that they could eat you and your family. Fairies are a nuanced creature. They are not just pretty, pretty, pretty girls. They are monsters too. I hope that a fairy never comes for you. Don't play with the magic. Don't play with the magic. Don't play you around with fairy magic. Yeah, you are drawing. We didn't talk about what you're drawing. Right? <laughs> no, what what are you drawing, Chrissy? So, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Kurt helped make a very cool book series called Legends of the Fallen. Kurt's a baby, by the way. Yes, Kurt's child. Um, and well, Kurt's a baby. That's my new nickname on oh, the street. Oh, sorry, Kurt's baby. Kurt's, Kurt's baby, baby helped Legend. make uh, a game. A ta- you call it a tabletop game? Tabletop role playing game. Tabletop yeah, yeah. role playing game called Legend. Legends of the Fallen. That's right. And it has a following it of does. people who read the book and we're working on the third book. Yeah. And and Chrissy's doing some uh, spot art, some uh, what would you call this? You uh, spot illustration. Spot illustration or basically it's kind of, it's kind of a test. Yeah, I was gonna say basically I'm doing like a test. Yeah, yeah. Um to see what I can if I can draw fantasy art. So I think you're doing a great job. I like it. I don't what do know. you guys think? I think she's doing great. I've been having to draw a lot of men recently, so that's been like a fun challenge for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting better at it. I'm learning about muscles, because like with girls, you you mean obviously you can draw muscular women, but you know usually women's shapes are very like round when I draw them, mm. but men's are more angular. angular. Cool. I guess so. They're so cool and angular, like knives. But I like nice. angular, like, um, shapes when I draw. This is, like, the weird, minute way that I think about drawing. Like, oh, I like curves, and I like angles, and I like it when, like, curves and angles do this, like, slopey thing. I, I don't know. It's weird. Drawing is weird. I have... I'm similar to music. I like it... I like half-tone movements. Oh, yeah? Like that. Oh, uh, yeah. So... The last step. <laughs> When the song has a half step movement, I'm all about it. Like, that's it, half step movement. I get it. So, Chrissy and Curse Baby, uh, better than medieval artists. Sorry, that's not far. Those drawing techniques are centuries old. And fairies are definitely real, one okay. way or another. I can, I can see that. Uh, and Bridgestream says they're Irish, and old people here told us to stay away from fairy forts. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> fairies are dangerous. Yeah, they could they could be up in there stealing your stealing your bread and babies and replacing them with changelings. <laughs> and is that what they do? Hmm? Is that a thing they do? Uh, yeah. Well, that's like a that's a popular myth, especially yeah. the spriggan, like like uh, stealing the thing and replacing it. That's what spriggans do. That's, yeah. That that. I mean, I think a lot, that's a lot of fairy myths, but the Spriggan is one where, like, the fairy, they, yeah, they'll place their baby if you're not careful with a big-headed creature. I feel like there are no, like, modern stories that, like, protect people from, like, death like there were back in the day. Um... So I feel like those, all those stories are just, like, cautionary, right? To yeah, keep you like, from, like, killing yourself as like a kid. They're, like, heuristics. Like, yeah. don't go to this own place. Yeah. Uh, actually, No Name has a good point about the similar to that, because you can see literally hundreds of them in major cities every June. What's Nothing that? but a love for fairies and a show of support. Well, I guess that's a little <laughs> different. We're saying that they're benevolent, benevolent fairies. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. Every June and every major cities, I get it. I get, see, I see. Get it. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I get yes, it. Yes, I get it. Uh, and yeah, fairies are both the fantasy and the ones that we, we find, uh, you know, um, celebrating um, in the streets every June uh, are often wondrous and, and, and fill us with wonder. And they, they're, they kind of fill that role of Fantasy and a two spirit fantasy, right? Kind of thing. They have one foot in each world, which is very cool. Uh, Bit of streaming says it's great art. Thank you. Thank you. And No Name says uh, that they're Indigenous American. Yes, yeah, yeah. We we know that. So whenever we need whenever we need uh, some references or or questions on the Indigenous experience, we always ask No Name. So thank you for that. 
Uh, well, do indigenous peoples believe in like any kind of fairy thing? Are there fairies in like indigenous culture? I mean, there's or something yeah. similar to a fairy. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Let, let us know. Uh, we're 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 calling we're we're calling our uh, calling you our resident name. indigenous expert. <clears throat> Um, and yeah, also, if another family should arrive, we'll have plenty of potatoes for you. Ooh. Yeah, that was unfortunate. The, yeah. uh, pota- uh, potato famine. The, the old the, 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 the potato the... famine. But yeah, so, so mm. the, the game that we're writing is based more on Celtic Welsh mm. mythology, but we do borrow from Irish and Scottish and, like, Manx stuff, too, obviously. You can you know, it's all kind of put, in, put together in, like, one fantasy world. So we'll borrow from where we can, but it's meant to be sort of... The lore is is more inspired by early like early AD. What do you call it? Post BC um, Roman invasion, early Roman invasion, Iron Age Britain type of mm. stuff. So, so that's where the these fairies live. And in the cosmology, basically, there's five gods that used to be mortals, and when people die, they could become spirits or whatever uh, in the other world. And if they are extremely, what's it called, um, how you say, loyal and valued, they can rise up the ranks and become telistig. Telistig. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Because <laughs> even though I write it, I, I can't say any words well. Wow. Uh, telistig. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. And those are like the higher class noble fairies that often take human form. Mm. And that's kind of what this is, I think. I'm sure Darren will, will correct me. <laughs> You're wrong. Is. You're wrong. That's not that what that is. He, like, wakes up from sleep. He's like, I hear mistakes. (laughs) Yeah, I'm actually streaming with him in nine hours. So, our evening time in Britain's 12 p.m. time. So, if you're in Britain, Britain, join us again for a stream during your lunch time. If you're British. If you're British. Now, Chrissy does a really good British accent, if you know this. We we went to a pub recently, and I basically (laughs) challenged her to just... Have a British accent the whole time. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and she was talking to strangers and people and pretending to be British, and she yeah. just like held it the whole time. Oh, it's so funny. There, there was this group of people who they wanted a, um, they wanted to take a photo, so they're like, "Oh, could you take our photo, please?" And I'm like, "Sure, love. I'll take a photo. It was your mate. So you get all your mates around, and we'll just take a little nice quick photo." So the whole time that we're sitting outside next to these people, we have to sing. I have to I have to talk like I'm English, you know, the whole time. You know, I'm not like great at British accent, but I can try. And um, it's not it's consistent to me. Like I can consistently keep a tone that's like English the whole time. But I'm, I imagine that when I talk in English, uh, British 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 English British. I probably conflate a bit of accents from other places because I don't know a lot about the regional dialects, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just sort of put it together in a way that sounds, you know, natural to me. But I'm not really sure how natural or where my accent is from, you know, because I I just watch a lot of BBC, honestly. <laughs> so when Black I, Mirror. Yeah, I watch a lot of Doctor, Doctor Who, um, and yeah, Black Mirror. And what well, else? I would like the Mighty Bush and um, the IT crowd. Soka. 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 That happens every time I try to do some kind of like other <laughs> language now. I just like Japanese will like fall out of my mouth. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Brit- <laughs> British, Brit- British accents. And they'd all sound like Bert from. Bert from Mary Poppins. <laughs> Hello, love, <laughs> I'm here for all your oh. chimneys. Yeah, that was a choice. Pip, pip, cheerio. They should have just made him American living in, right? It would have worked. Yeah, it's super weird. Why do they do that? Yes, authenticity. You don't think she was just, oh, what was the name of the, um, the actress? Um, um, it's uh, a lady. Uh, Isn't she the sound of music? Lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, what's her name? Mary Poppins. Uh, actress. Why, why do I know? Darn it, what's her uh, name? Julian. Julian Andrews. Yeah. So Julian, wasn't Julian Andrews just like, why, don't do this. Stop that. Why didn't they, well, I actually, honestly, back in those days, like, yeah. women weren't that respected as far as, like, because they could have been like, hey, Julian Andrews, can you please teach him how to have a British <laughs> accent? They probably wouldn't even, like, yeah. like, listen to her authority on it, sure. you know. Despite her being, like, a an actual viable, like, British person. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant um, actress, yeah. brilliant creator, like, very sharp. They're like, no, 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 this is fine. Julie's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. this is, uh. You're trying your best, certainly. 
yeah, yeah. No name says your accent's pretty good. Very southern, very BBC news. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and bit of screen says that when I try to do a British accent, you do the football ool again. Come on, score more. I can't even do it. Come on. Score more bloody goals. Score more bloody goals. What? What are you? What are you over here doing? You fucking git. Do it. <laughs> do it right. Do it proper. I, I like that idea. Yeah. Ooh, I can't. I can't do. It. I right. am terrible with that. All right. Accents. You just. You drop. You drop things. Yeah. You just drop things, man. Yes. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the only thing I. Can you drop. <laughs> you drop. The Jamaican is easy because you just kind of have to shift your tone. You shift your tone. You do Jamaican. You just kind yeah. of like switch your tone. Yeah. It's a little African. It's a little Af. It's a it's little, little African. African. Right, it's a little African. The Africans. Right, African. But Britain, British. How do I do a Brit like, British? British. You just drop things, you just or drop, you you right. make rounder sounds. You make rounder sounds. Round. Like I won't. I won't. <laughs> I won't. Also, T's are not dropped in English. Usually, uh, so we have Americans tend to drop T's, right? We have a mm, flat of T. So this <laughs> So this nay. So this nay. So when you do a British accent, yeah. your 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 emphasis is stronger, and your T's are sharper. Your T's are sharper. Yes. Okay. So instead of saying water, water, yeah, you say water. 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 All right, got so it. So it's round right. and T's. I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna work on so that someday when we go to London, we just load you, you just walk around England and you say, "Hey, mate, I have a pasty. Do you have pasties here?" I freaking love a, I love a mince pasty. Do you like mince pasties? Does anybody else like mince pasties? I don't, I don't know if I had a pasty. You never had a pasty? I must have. I oh. must have. It's like a meat pie. I was only, I was only in London for like uh, four days or something. So It's like it's like a meat pie. A meat pie. Meat pie. Yeah. I wonder, do, I wonder if the Jamaican like meat pies come from like pasty culture. Or do pasties come from Jamaican pies? <laughs> the culture and they just re-imported it. Yeah. Like. Dude, pasties are awesome. Also, Jamaican pies are awesome. I wish that I could eat a Jamaican meat pie. I want to eat a Jamaican meat pie. Have you ever had a Jamaican meat pie? No, but I want to so now. so fucking good. Dude, I love Jamaican meat pie. Uh, when we go, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get a, we'll cut a few. And uh, also, no name mentioned that Northern British is unintelligible. The Liverpool at Scouts accent is wonderful. It is very cool. It's cool, but it doesn't sound like English at all. I remember when I, so when I was in England, there were definitely people who I would talk to, and I was like, are you speaking English? <laughs> like, I know you are speaking English at me, and I know you understand me, but I cannot understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. I think especially, like, I think Irish, yeah. Irish adjacent English sounds really like not English. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah when it's like really thick. Yeah. Yeah, my one of the experiences I loved going through Wales. Uh, How do you hear actual so Welsh? Welsh? Yeah, you hear actual Welsh, and you see Welsh everywhere, and it's you get to experience what it feels like to be a non-English speaker going through a place that has all English on the walls, like. It must be what immigrants feel, because I can see all these letters, mm. and I know that they look like, it looks like English, but sure. I can't understand yeah, any of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks really cool, and, and, and most of it's actually really beautiful. Um, I wish I could speak it well. Um, but Darren, so my writing partner, he lives in Wales, he's from London. Does he England. speak Welsh? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, because when he went to Wales, mm. he had to teach, because he got his, his doctorate in, in physics, mm. and he has students from Wales whose first language is Welsh. Mm. So it's really interesting because like they would he would be teaching them scientific terms, but they don't know it in English. Uh, but they know it in, in Welsh. Welsh. Wow. And that's super super wild, right? And their English is perfect because they speak well not almost perfect because obviously they don't know certain words in, right. in in Welsh or in English. Right. They know it in Welsh. So but I thought that was really, really fascinating, right? It's interesting. You would think because it uses the same alphabets and stuff that it would use the same kinds yeah. of terms and stuff for or more loan words for things like that. Would yeah, feel like they would be loan words in like Japanese, for example. Right, but even in Japanese that happens a lot. There's lots of, especially medical terms and stuff are different yeah. in Japanese. So it's like really, I, like I had students who were doctors um, and they were like learning English versions of stuff, and it was really hard for them. Mm. So yeah, that makes sense. Oh. So I didn't notice the Thrillmo is here. Hi, Thrillmo. Thrillmo Baggins. What up? Down here to ride by your mom. Down here to be riding for your mom's eye surgery. I hope your mom's okay. What happened? What? Yeah, your mom's having eye surgery. I hope it's, <gasps> it's not I hope it's not like serious. To, to something serious. Um, it's like a cool LASIK corrective surgery or something. Yeah. 
or like uh, a glaucoma or something. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so. We're we're full of, we're we're, we're sitting all our gambates. Gambates to your mom. Uh, and not only say they got patsies in Michigan, but they might be a different thing altogether. Mm. And business for me, and yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure they're probably fine, you know. What's it? What's it? <laughs> yeah, patsies in uh, Michigan. Oh, I'm sure they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, at least for the Americans. Any any market. meat pie, I like. I love meat pies. Yeah. Meat pies. <gasps> we should make meat pies with the tofu meat. We should make tofu meat. They make pretty good tofu meat here. Or soy meat, really. Soy meat, yeah, it's pretty good. So it's so good. It's like way better than I remember soy meat being I, in America. That's our weekend project or tonight project. Meat yeah, pies. Maybe weekend. We'll make some meat pies. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, the scouser accent is the one good English accent to the claims of this stream. <laughs> it is cool. The only. And Noni says it's the only English accent they can listen to all day. Um, oh, yeah, it's almost a descriptive. So one eye each week. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, good. Rather than doing both. Not like, well, some people do. Like, the surgery I had on my feet, usually people do one at a time. But because I didn't want to be out of school for a long period of time, I just did both at the same time. Sometimes that's a vibe. Sometimes you don't have time to, like, you know, heal and take your time. So you just got to do it all at once. And that sucks. But then it's done. I was, trying to think, I was trying to think, do I know any songs with the word I in it? And I yes, the got you, babe. Behind uh, the I want it that way. Different I. <laughs> That's a different I, isn't it? No one knows what it's like to be the bad man. What song is that? You don't know that song. To be the sad oh, man. Oh, I do know that song. Behind blue eyes. Uh, oh, I got one for you. my dream. You don't know that song, huh? I don't know if I know. I think that's the who. This one has I in it. Does it? Somebody I used to know. Oh, different I. It has to be the eyes, like the eyes. Okay, um, the eyes. Oh, I got it. Private eyes. <laughs> They're watching me. You. Wait, okay, wait. Move. Do you know those words? Oh, I don't know. Private eyes. I just know how it sounds. Hall and I just go. And... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I can play. Hold on. Let me get the chorus. I love that song. So right now. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we can do that. I'm sure we can. Yeah, that song's a bop. Uh... That's a. Uh... That's the band that I like, isn't it? Uh, that's well, that's Hollow Notes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no name I agreed. You can see with five with just one eye, so that's good. And by the way, off topic, but raid idea for later. Raid C D A C D A W G V A who's doing a charity stream for the Immunodeficiency Foundation. Oh. Anyway, lurking mostly before bed, and oh, boost. Yeah. So how do we raid? How do we do that? Yeah, I don't know. We're can, new to Twitch. Can you do that? So how Since do you? You're how, a mod. Can I do that as a mod? Can you teach me how to raid? Teach me how to raid. Teach, teach, teach me how, how to raid. raid. How do I raid? Let me see. Is there a button that says raid? Um. Yeah, yeah. and bit of stream says, uh, okay, I'll, I'll look it up. I must get to bed, but it's been some crack popping in for tunage, bats, and drying. Okay. Hopefully you'll be back. Yeah, please hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Read the bell for notification. No, but seriously, thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, and hopefully you'll be back. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, bit of follows your art on Insta and Twitter. Ah. So it's great to get streaming. Great, great, great. Oh, so my Instagram post worked. Yeah. So let me see. Let me see here. So if it's uh, how to stream on Twitch. <laughs> how to That's, stream. How to stream. Sorry. How to read. <laughs> How do I Twitch? On uh, Twitch. So start raid, type raid, followed by the name of the channel you wish to raid. Okay. So I hit slash raid, and then the name. All right. So let me see if you I can do that. You should be able to do that, since you mod. Uh, so raid, uh, and then who did you say it was? C-D-A-W-G-V-A. Uh, okay. Oh. So the space between is important. Mm-hmm. So do, do I, all right, if I do this. Did that work? Mm. Yeah, how come it's not working? Wait, was it? Did it? Did it? Maybe. Uh, hold on. Did it, did it disappear or something? Wait, are we there? Do uh, I have to do it? Is it a... All right, let's try that again. Is it a I have to do kind of raid. thing? Raid. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you have to do it. Um. So raid, slash raid, then C-D-A-W-G-V-A. Okay, we're learning, we're guys. We're learning chat. We're gonna do a raid. I'm right sorry, now. everybody. We should raid people every so often, but it's only chat, right? Hold on. So the raid. And then, so, and then, 
Oh, okay, and then the channel. So hit channel. Uh, what? So you see how it, it pulled up the prompt? So hit that prompt, but then put the name of the cha of the streamer, which is CDWGVA, right? CDAWCGVA, mm -hmm. per Rilmo. Rude. That's not it. God damn it. Dish. Do, do I keep the brackets? I'm do you assuming, keep the brackets? I'm assuming I keep the brackets. Okay, let's try it with the brackets and then without. Okay. Are yeah. we going to get teleported somewhere? Is that how this I works? I don't know. It's a raid! Wait, is there supposed to be a space in Oh, try it again and take out the brackets. Maybe. Is this, oh, oh yeah. Um, it's very unclear. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, he said bugs and raid commercial. Look at everyone is raid. Oh, that's true. That that commercial is a bop. I remember that. Oh, I raid or her settings do not allow me to raid at this time. I cannot raid. Oh, so we can't raid their chat. Oh, that's she a says shame. no, or they say no. I don't know, but, but they are. Yeah. Oh, they they say no raid. So let me let me see. What's her name? CD. Let me, I cannot raid. We would like permission to raid. Let me see if I can find him on Twitch. I don't even know what that does. What does raid do? We just enter their chat. I'm old. <laughs> If, man, learning how to stream makes me feel old because I feel like oh. I should have been learning how to do this for a while. They have like twenty nine. Oh, they have like twenty nine thousand viewers right now. That's oh, that's why <laughs> they they need to raid me. I I I don't have what I have six wonderful people watching me right now. I don't yeah, think I can help with their raid. Six awesome people, definitely. Um, seven. Seven wonderful people. Uh, but it's good that they're doing something for charity. I do like that. I'm yeah. a big fan of that. So they're actually outdoors and doing stuff. They're doing like a live live stream. Yeah, they're uh, C I C C Dog V A Virginia, and they're doing a cycle thon. Yeah, very cool. Very that cool. is cool. I appreciate that. So you, you, who are your favorite aside from us? Because you're doing <laughs> today. Who are your favorite Twitch streamers? We're curious. You could you could educate us about. That I also want to know like how often do you watch people streaming? Yeah. I'm always curious about this because I tend to watch people's like streams through like YouTube and like later. I never watch streams like live, so I'm always interested in that culture. I'm trying to think who I watch. I watch the Magic Gathering streamers, I guess. Yeah. Like, like Louis Scard Louis Scard Varga, Louis Scard Varga. Scard Varga. It's a very cool nice. name. Uh, LSV, um, and he's a, he's one of the world's best magic players, so I watch him every so often. Mm. Raid Shadow Legends, the game everyone shills for, but no one actually plays. That's true, right? I don't know any. I've Shad never met a person who's like, I, I really know, like Raid Shadow know, Legends. I don't know any Shadow Legends players ever. Um, imagine if this were still just a TV or the old live days. Basically, your stream chapters to another stream. Uh, it's a cyclothon. So. Oh, I see. Oh, thanks, No Name, for, for having eyes for us. But, you know, we, 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 we heck appreciate it. We love the conversations. We love jamming with you guys, with you, and talking about, um, <laughs> Texas Hands Pizza. Texas Hands Pizza. <laughs> Wait, did I ever get an answer about fairies in indigenous culture? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No Name, are there, tell us about fairy, if there's any fairy mythology. Or fairy-like things. Fairy-like things, yeah. Native American uh, mythology is quite interesting. Because, I mean, I know there's lots of spirits-related stuff. Like... I love them, I love them, I love them. I wanted to be a dolphin when I was a little girl. I thought it would be real swell to swim with fishes in the sea. I wish I could fly the ocean bottoms with great speed. With his great speed. I want to be a dolphin when I come back. I hope I can either be a dolphin or maybe I could be a crow. That's 
That's very specific. <laughs> I want to be a dolphin or a crow. Yeah. yeah. For similar reasons. I feel like they're very similar animals when you really think about it. Uh, because they're both hyper intelligent mm. and use tools, mm. but they're not by. Well, I guess they're not too. What do you call it? Hominids. Or no, hum, humans. Mm. Human like. What do you call it? Uh, bipedal. Oh, bipedal? Uh, no, birds are bipedal. Uh, humanoid. They're not humanoid. Humanoid, yeah. Humanoid, yeah. Um, so first of all, the name says, uh, their, uh, uh, no name is of Anishinab, uh, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm going to say this wrong. So Anishinaabe tribe, which is one of a dozen Algonquin tribes. So you only have knowledge about your specific denomination. Valid. No, no literally means with wings in indigenous culture. Okay, that's mm. interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Although I, I do think that even in like, uh, traditional Welsh or, um, European Celtic mythology, Fairies mean a lot of different things. Yeah. Too. They're not just It's like, not just like wingy things, right? Yeah, yeah. The fae, it's like the, a spirit. Yeah, yeah. The fairy yeah. folk could be spirit type creatures. They could be creatures with giant heads and, and, and shapeshifters and so on. So. Yeah, our, our like Western idea of a fairy is very different from what traditional imagery of fairies is. Like, there are some fairies in like the lore that represent like what we think of a standard fairy right yep. but most are not like that i really want to watch ancient magus bride with you what's it called ancient magus bride ancient magus bride tell me about it it's a it's about welsh <coughs> or like celtic like fairies and stuff it's an anime yeah i told you about it before hold on i'll tell you right here my nose here um uh, so yeah, old. I do like fairies, so I mean, if it's in the Welsh fairy uh, realm, it's like this. Then I should watch it because he's a fairy. Oh, cool. Yeah, they got. She's a slave eggy. She's a what now? Slave eggy. Slave eggy. Yeah, like she can see, mm. and this is silky. Okay, so does it take place in Japan? Uh, in no. It starts in Japan, I think. Oh, I see. And then it is moved to Europe. And he's like a... He's a magus. He's a mage. He's like a really powerful mage. But nobody... There's like a mystery about what he is, actually. Nobody really knows for sure. But he can turn into like this really big monster thing. And he, she has a black dog. But he's so cool. Yeah, he is cool. They're married. <laughs> okay. But I right, no spoilers. But. Well, it's not a spoiler. It's it's called the Ancient Magus Bride. Oh well, that's fair. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the title. Yeah. Um. No spoilers, but the three bodies have a problem. Oh well. No spoiler, but the guy breaks bad. <laughs> Sure. He becomes bad. He becomes bad. I don't yeah. know this. <laughs> yeah, this guy's cool too. He's yeah. a black dog. So Thermal said that Magic Bride is baller. Yeah. And it has a good magic system. I right, definitely. Yeah, definitely it's a that. great show. I haven't watched the new season, but it turned into like some kind of magic school thing. I don't know how long that lasts, but I, I don't love that direction for this show. Hopefully that's like. But you still think it's worth watching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Noni says that also just brings this to light. There are zero legends about anything resembling a Bigfoot in any indigenous legends or culture. Bigfoot is 100% a creature made up by colonial Americans. Bigfoot. Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's Even true. though it's called a Sasquatch. Yeah. Or whatever. Like all these like very indigenously inspired names that they have for them. Let's look at top 10 indigenous myth, uh, mythical creatures. I'm going to look this up right now. We're going to get to the bottom of what the top ten are. <laughs> top ten mythical creatures from Native American short lore. This is per Sky History TV. Number one is the Skinwalkers. Oh, yeah. I've heard creatures. of that. Yeah. They're said to be witches who have per- perverted the ancient medical and magical ceremonies of their people. Oh, uh, that's in, they're in True Blood, I yeah. think. By the way, this is a quick uh, this is a quick shit on one of my it used to be my favorite games of all time, and I still like because I play uh, it. Is this a magic rant? Yeah. So the new magic can I go into quick magic Those rant? Are... The new Magic the Gathering said, no name. Look this up. Is a is about a plane. So it's a multiverse, and they discovered a plane that's like a desert with an ancient vault that people are trying to open. So all these wizards from all over the multiverse come in or but they all just dress like cowboys mm. however however there are no indigenous people there it was a totally abandoned plane so no one was living there yeah. 
So they have cowboys without any indigenous guilt. Folk. Yeah, trying to avoid the guilt. But isn't that just erasure, right? If you have cowboys. I think so. I... So, I don't know, man. I'm not about that shit. And then they have all the things like cowboy hats and, and, and turquoise. Or what. But why are they adopting these aesthetics? Sorry, it just fucking pisses me off. That shit. This is goofy. Yeah. I don't mind fantasy takes on, on like, real world stuff and, like, dressing it up and so on. But when you sort of divorce it. From the reality. From the reality of, of it. And just enjoy the fantasy of, like, ooh, it's a, it's the, like, the fantastic cliche. cowboy world yeah. where everything was cool and super awesome. Uh, sorry. Just yeah, that. I think it is pretty insensitive to just, like, have a cowboy. Like, especially for, like, American history. Like, having, like, a cowboy aesthetic and ignoring, like, the realities of the Western like yeah it was important because those yeah the interaction between them were you know that was an important part for the it's like why did cowboys exist (laughs) yeah who do they learn stuff from why do they why are they using turquoise colors yeah uh, anyway yeah where do they get the turquoise they just like (laughs) figure that out on their own yeah exactly it's very i don't know i think it's disrespectful um fuck where do they even understand how to use horses (laughs) Do they have, I don't think they have horses. I have to look at that. But, well, they have horses from fantasy realm. No, but still, like, it's all a part of, like, indigenous culture. Sure, sure, yeah. Like. It's, yeah, so, uh, that bothers me. Anyway, um, well, she has to learn magic somehow. Makes some sense. Probably just an arc. Oh, there's that. Yeah, for the uh, ancient magic yeah, bride, yeah. Magic bride. So, I will definitely check that out, and then we'll let you know what we think. And, uh... Noni says that Trade Explainer, a YouTuber, has videos about all kinds of cryptids and does a great job of debunking a lot of myths. Cool. Yeah. And No Name Oh, you know, is, is, is chiming in on, on what they, how they feel about indigenous myths. And if you want to include indigenous myths in your tabletop RPGs, do your research. You can have a lot of fun with myths from different cultures, and that's totally okay. Just do your research and be respectful. So that's the thing. I feel like they just didn't feel like doing mm. the research. I think they were just trying to avoid... The, they were trying to avoid, genocide. you know, the, the, like, bad stuff. But that doesn't mean you have to, like, erase it. Yeah. Like, learn about it, do it respectfully, yeah. and, like, create a story that makes sense for everybody to be included. Yeah. It's like... Also, the, the... You can still do it in a way that kind of makes sense, where... Like, for example, in the world that we're creating, Avalon, the Romans just kind of steamrolled the... The Romans, in real life... In some places, steamrolled the native Welsh populations, right? Because mm-hmm. they had, like, shamans. They were terrifying, but they had, like, a, a resounding vit- victory at, um, in, in certain places. But in a fantasy world where magic is real, the ties can change, right? Mm-hmm. So if you create, like, a cowboy setting with, like, Native Americans, and the Native Americans have, the indigenous cultures have magic, mm-hmm. and to add, like, actual magic to counteract weapons in a world called Magic the Gathering... It changes the dynamic a little right. bit. Right. You can rewrite the history a bit, you know? Yeah. You so. can retcon the bad part, you know? Yeah. Anyway. But whatever. It, it bothers me. <laughs> Just annoying. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, Noni says, don't pull a JK Rowling and we pull. Yeah. 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 Definitely. We don't want, we don't want to do that. Um, yeah. In the world we're creating, we, we are buying from real world um, mythologies and cultures and so on. But we do a lot of reading, and, like, one of my favorite books is, like, an 800-page Celtic... Chrissy receives me reading almost every day, I think, on my iPad, but it's it's just, like, a dry historical text on Celtic culture. Mm. So, I'm about it. Sorry, I'm not talking about historical text. And it's, it's, no, it's, you're fine. Sorry, I'm not yawning at you. I'm you yawning can, at okay. life. You can, you can not yawn at I'm me, not so. yawning at you. I would never... But, I love the, uh... I love what you're drawing here. The fairies coming out well. What's a good, what's a good, uh, Celtic progression, I wonder? Like a, what do you... I used to have that, like, dark note in it that I like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to do. I'm trying to remember. Mm, not that, right? Mm-mm. It's like a, maybe Lydian, so... Uh, it's that thing I like in a lot of songs. Oh, this. Yeah. It reminds me of Diablo. Remember, like, Diablo 2's music? Uh, vaguely. Uh, there's music that sound like that in it. It's really good. Yeah. 
Y'all remember Diablo 2? I remember Diablo 1 vaguely and Diablo again we had one computer in our house so my brothers wanted to play Diablo more mm. so I just I just always had to fight for video games so I never I was I suppose privileged in that regard yeah. being the only child for a really long time basically um yeah you got to play all the video games you wanted well my dad was the one I had to compete with so oh sure sure but, and then he ended up hating it because you know some behavior of the devil yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then oh i uh, and also to clarify things from running, there was at least one species of horse that was domesticated by indigenous people yep. in pre-colonial times yep uh however that group of indigenous people are not a, a moo culture so i cannot speak on the details of your culture my yeah. culture yeah, of their culture i think it's the well. what we call like a pinto today mm, um was originally indigenous to the united states um it's also a thing too whatever. where we sort of put your you know exactly what um oh is that what they named the car pinto huh mm. yeah so exactly what um what what no name is referring to the fact that they have their own tribe and mm. can't really speak for other tribes. Right. There's so many tribes, right? Yeah. And I'm sure. And but like, in the zeitgeist, zeitgeist just, kind just kind of lump, lump it all together. All Native American people. Yeah, people, like, it was as diverse as, like, Africa is, too. People yeah. do that with Africa, I think. It's the mm -hmm. same. And probably Asia, too, for <laughs> people outside of Asia. They're just like, oh, yeah, you guys are all Chinese. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's the same, like, it weird. But you don't get that with... Europe as much. One fantasy world I, I'd like to get your opinion on if you ever come across it is a, uh, it's called Deadlands, and they had a card game, they have a role playing game and all this stuff, and they do have it's like a weird world where like gates to hell open up and 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 all these like creatures and weird things come out in America, mm. and the Native Americans they in order to sort of fight against the colonialism and, and all the you know the invaders. They start the Sioux Nation in the West, mm. and so a lot of tribes sort of create a Native Indigenous Peoples Alliance mm. in order to maintain their power and to fight against both the dark forces and against the um, the, the what we call it the Western invaders, so to speak, or mm. the the white man, the the pale skin invaders. Sure. Um, I like that setting. They also have a Chinese people called Maze Rats. Maze Rats. Uh, they're they're like pirates, Chinese pirates. <laughs> cool i guess yeah i like it i think it's a cool world and then abraham lincoln is a ghost <laughs> sure why not he, well, after he gets assassinated he becomes the agent for the pingertons sure, and why not? they call him the ghost so yeah so that's the thing and then the civil war never got resolved and north and south are still two different things maybe it should be hot takes yeah i don't like the south <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty hot take. Tell me more. Every time I go there, I feel scared. Because I've only ever been discriminated against directly. I don't want to keep this as In southern states. I don't really appreciate the way that the south is. I'm not saying I don't like southern people per se. I don't like the area very much. It's hot, it's humid, and all of the history there is bad. I don't like going to the south. I don't like going to the south, no. I do not like going to the south. I don't like going south. It just freaks me out. It gives me anxiety. Especially, yeah. like, if you go to, like, a gas station in a part of town where you're, like, not sure what kind of part of town it is. Sure. Scary. It's, it's, uh, it sounds so strange. Yeah. Uh, uh. Like, too many Ford pickup trucks and too many hat guys. Mm -hmm. like, uh. And you just want people to be like, you're not around here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh. yeah. I got you. I'm not saying everybody down there is like that. That's not true for sure. But I just always feel uncomfortable when I go down there. I get that. I mean, I haven't been in the South much, but I can understand mm -hmm. <laughs> where you come from. Name also says that a lot of tribes that they, they use in uh, quotations because the concept didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. there. Uh, but yeah, pre-colonial times there were thousands of people that had their own unique cultures, and today they're specifically 
uh, less cultures, literally than 10% of what it was, but still range in high hundreds. Yeah, it's, mm. it's unfortunate, because there's so much... There's probably so many lost stories and lost histories, and yeah. that's frustrating, right? Because mm. there's so many cool ideas from those. Like, stories are valuable because of of the ideas that come from it. Right. Um, there's, a, there's that phrase that I, I, I came across, or keep coming across, by Neil Gaiman, I think. It's, uh, never trust the storyteller, but always trust the story. Mm. And that means that, you, you know, even if you don't necessarily are of that culture or aren't you don't trust that is true. There's a grain of truth in stories that are valuable. Neil and, Gaiman. Hmm? Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. 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 Is it Gaiman? Mm. Okay, I said Gaiman. Gaiman, yeah. So losing all those stories and all those elements of culture is really unfortunate. Actually, I don't know if it's Neil Gaiman or Gaiman. I feel like it's either or. Gaiman. Gaiman? Gaiman. But yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> It's a shame to think about all of the stories that you'll never hear because of all of the people who were removed from this planet in the in the uh, in the pursuit of progress um, under the name of civilization. There are many people on this planet who stories can't exist anymore. They were told that the way that they live is not important for society. And here we live now in a world forgetting about our past. Believing that this is the best life when we don't even know the rest lives. We you ever get bummed out that so many people are no longer here yeah, I in the name that. of progress that does bum me out mm. no um yeah that was a, that was a real somber way to end that song sorry it was deep <laughs> uh so there, uh, let's see. Over 500 groups are federally recognized, and the U.S. is once called Turtle Island. Really? Is that... Is that ah, true? that's right. Yeah, yeah, turtle yeah. Island. Is it shaped like a turtle, or is it just the... There are lots of different... Actually, lots of different cultures separate from each other believe that Earth is on a turtle. Yeah. So you know why? Well, it kind of makes sense if you look at it from the shore. In the sense that, like, if you're on the mountains or, like, on the shore... Yes, it you looks see, like, like a, something floating in the water. Yeah, it looks like, mm. we're, like, clearly it's, like, a big thing floating in the water. And the yeah. only thing that you... That you no, the does that. Commonly see the turtles. Turtle, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the name is based on a creation story common to several indigenous peoples of the northeastern woodlands of North America. Mm. So, Turtle Island. I do like that. Come on over to Turtle Island. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll introduce that to the Evolving World, where there's, like, a moving... A moving continent. It's called Turtle Island. That's called Turtle Island. Yeah. Have you seen Strange World? Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Strange World, the Disney movie. It's basically um, that. <laughs> yeah, there's basically a, a giant turtle that they live on, and it's yeah, I like it. So it was good. Yeah, you're still here. That's at least one person that's part Blackfoot living in Japan. That's true. There's a black. Yeah, at least one. At least there's probably a few more of us out here, but you know. Yeah, diaspora. That old diaspora. Yeah. It's a bummer, though. I wish I had had an opportunity to meet that side of my family, you know, because mm-hmm. I don't, I'm sure there are people who are more close to it than I am, but if they are, I was never close to them, and I don't even know where to begin with that, mm-hmm. so. I mean, you could always, when you go back, sorry, I got to cease. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to reach out to organizations or sure. gatherings or somehow. Uh, it's coming out pretty well. Oh, sorry, hit. that's just my thing. I thought you hit it against something. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I still gotta do the water, I realize. You should definitely sing Cha La Hechali. That song is hard, by the way. Cha La Hechali! 
Oh, let me see if I can find the chorus. Chala, he chala. That doesn't mean anything, right? I don't think so. Let me see if I can find. Not far away. I, I feel get... like eighties Japanese music is just so full of like nonsense English. Fly away. Verse and chorus are right, but I'm not doing the chorus. I just gotta listen to it. I gotta listen to it, sorry. Ah, uh, man, you done broke, Kurt. Man, yeah, that sounds hard. Wait, cha-la, head cha-la. It means nothing. Yeah. The song is actually difficult. <laughs> There's like a lot of chords, man. The bass is crazy. Yeah, the bass is good. I like it. <laughs> Fly away. This is definitely what uh, South Park is parodying, right? Yeah, it sounds definitely. Songs like this, anyway. There were a few kind of. I guess so. Yeah, it was just like the aesthetic back then. God, what the hell is going on there? <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. It's so weird. So many chords. That doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, let me give you another listen. This course is weird. Man, yeah, god damn it. I shouldn't do this on stream. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, I won't do that on stream. All right, I will learn Chala Hechala and then we'll come back on a different stream and like figure it out. It's hard. Uh, but Chala Hechala makes sense to a native Japanese speaker, according to your Japanese peers, anyway. Hmm. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, let me see if I could. Maybe it's like a play on something. Chala, he chala. Let me see if I could find. What does chala, he chala mean? Um. Oh, it's a romanization of he chala. He chala. Um. So which means no problem, or I can handle uh. it. Oh, okay. I see. Interesting. So. Chala head chala is uh, okay, so it's actually head chala. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's a like head. He, I think it's like herasu. Yeah. Like, so I he. think it probably comes from herasu, oh. which means to lessen. Ha. So head chala. So yeah, it's, it's no it's, problem it's, kind of thing. Yeah, like no problem or, or I can do it. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, funny. Head chala. This <laughs> is nothing. But head chala. Ah, okay, that makes chala. sense. Yeah, funny. Rest in peace, Toriyama Sensei, for sure. Yeah, Toriyama, uh, a brilliant person that made tons of things that continue to inspire all of us, right? Yeah. Which is wild. Chara, hit chara. I I will learn that song. Red fighting love. Tsuhayashi jinchimono, mitabarabizkaru. Jackie-chan, yeah, ninja-ga-imasu. Hey, hey, let's go, kinkazuru. 
shook I was when I like started learning Japanese and then I was like watching this show and I was like holy shit that's actually Japanese it's like actually Japanese, it yeah. is a real Japanese song for forever I just thought they were making up like nonsense Japanese but it means everything about it is like a real song it's like amazing we got a power is another drink of all these song that is quite good but that link does not work for us uh dragon uh, is it regionally blocked yeah I have to find a different probably this one is it this one? Here's the perfect example of what you're talking about, of like design, right? Mm -hmm. Where the features aren't realistic, but they're so distinct. Yeah, they're right? iconic. They have vision. Man, the 80s were a vibe. I feel like theme songs for Jet for anime now, here's a hot take. Yeah. Play that on us. What's your hot take? Theme songs for anime now are kind of boring. They are kind of boring. Why yeah. do you say that? Because they are, I feel like, this is my opinion. This isn't like you're, a you're, fact. You're going bring, to bring, bring everyone down on us, but I'm, I'm in for it. Let's do it. Tell me. I just, I feel like they, with the exception of a few, there's a few that I think still do it really well. For example, I think Shingeki no Kyojin, uh, Attack on Titan has really good theme songs yeah. that match the anime. The atmosphere of it. Yeah. Right. But I feel like a lot of anime theme songs aren't made for the anime, per se. Yeah. They're just, like, made to be popular. Yeah. And, like, they're, like, trend, they're, like, chasing trends. Right. Yeah. I mean, arguably, some, the same could be said for some 80s songs, though, because they're chasing, like, the pop rock trends. Sure. Right maybe. I mean, perhaps that's true. Maybe I just have, like, a contextual, like, nostalgia for these kinds of songs better. But, I don't know. There are a few that are really good. I think um, Yasobi's Idol yeah. is like um, Perfect for really the anime. great for the, the anime. But the issue is, you watch other anime and you feel like they're trying to copy Just, Yasobi. Right. Yasobi. Yeah. And for example, Freiren. Freiren. So Freiren. Spoiler alert. <laughs> no, it's not. It's spoiler. not really a spoiler, but the theme song doesn't really feel like it belongs to that series, yeah. right? It feels like epic fantasy, but the the theme song is it's just like, like a cafe J-pop. Pretty J-pop, like yeah. it's like a fine song. It's not a bad song, yeah. but it is like you know missing some element that makes it unique yeah. to that series. Especially because it's so clearly inspired by JRPGs and Final Fantasy, Fantasy and Dragon and like, Yeah. They should be taking cute musical cues from Right, that. and the, the soundtrack to it's, the show has good. that. Yeah. But they're, the theme songs are not, like, reflective of the, the topic very well. For sure. Anyway. Oh, who's that? Who's that? We got oh, what's up, Giga? <laughs> uh, Giga! Yeah. The God of Power is t the hype. What up? How's it? How's your day going? When do you are you are you on your lunch break, Giga? <laughs> what up, Giga? What are you doing? Yeah, Chrissy has a point. Most anime outfits have nothing on. Mm. This. What uh -oh. is this? What's this? Hope it's not blocked in our country. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, here it is. Did you do it? Is that this one? Yeah. All right, lay it on us. Am I in the right key? <laughs> We should play this at the next jam session.
信じているのミラクルロマンス好きに変わって Oh, so cute. That chord, last chord? Yeah. That's a very Shin Ringo chord. That, so Shin Ringo would probably, probably inspired by Sailor Moon. By the, yeah. <laughs> by Sailor Moon. We call that a ma, C minor 6. Although, you know what also slaps is the Sailor Moon Stars theme song, which is the only season of Sailor Moon that has a different theme song. So Sailor Moon Stars? Uh huh. I used to be obsessed with this song because, like, back before, you know. I could ever watch this anime because there was no no translation. Yeah. I used to have a midi of this. Oh, this song. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Kind of. I don't know the song as well, but I love this song. This is the best part. Wait for it. This is the best part. Hold on. Waving. Here it comes. Wait at us. Song slaps. <laughs> you should watch that stream. You should show the video. <laughs> that video is great. That is a good song. Sailor like Stars that. is so hype, and you can tell it's like the last season of it too. Yeah. Like it feels, it feels mature mm. compared to like Sailor Moon in a weird uh, way. I can't explain. Are they actually growing up? I think they're in high school. Oh, I see. <laughs> in the original series, they're in junior high junior school, high, so right. they are actually in high school. Oh. So we have a question. What's uh, that? <laughs> from and thank you, No Name, for putting us on the Sailor Moon track. <laughs> So Thermo is asking, uh, mm. has singing often gotten easier in Japanese knowing the language? Yeah, it's totally. Still, yeah, it's still kind of <laughs> a secondary, right? So your brain is translated. Uh, I would I would say that Japanese is interesting because there's so many homophones. Mm. So it's good if you know it. Mm. But I think it's very common too for Japanese people, at least from what I know from my friends and ex-wives, to sing lyrics sometimes, mm -hmm. especially for harder songs, and not actually know what they mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I do, I think. Yeah. Even it, like even though I know Japanese, I don't always know what I'm saying, but I know what it sounds like. It makes the pronunciation and little things easier, yeah. especially like things that are kind of unique to Japanese, like yeah. to get to sounds and so on. What's especially interesting to me is that I've grown up watching anime, right? So I have pr like tried to sing Japanese songs mm -hmm. without knowing what they were, and now that I'm studying Japanese. When I sing those songs from my childhood, I actually understand them, or I know how to pronounce like words that I was kind of like sloshing over before, mm. which is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And also, like music in general takes still takes a different part of your brain. Yeah, so like, like you could kind of, kind of go on autopilot with certain things. Like I think I sing in Japanese better than I actually can speak Japanese because mm. it's like a different thing, right? It's just the sounds of Japanese yeah. I'm good at. Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah. It's a, it's a, the brain's interesting in that way. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Frame and Focus? Welcome. Dig, 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 hey. uh, And oh, No Name said, is it fair to compare to compare Sailor Moon to modern anime? No, but is Sailor Moon amazing? Yeah. yeah I don't uh, know, man. Sailor Moon, it just hits different. I have yet to see another... Like, I know they still make magical girl stuff. Yeah. Like, I know, like, Pretty Cure is, like, pretty popular. Yeah, but, but that's kind of like... It's just not the it same. The same. <laughs> it just doesn't hit the same. I don't know what it is. Like... Um, I think the stories are less mature. Like there was sure. something to me like Sailor Moon was obviously not an like a adult yeah. show, but it tackled a lot of themes subtly that were more mature, and it took itself a bit more seriously than like yeah. modern like uh, Pretty Girl uh, anime. Sure, it might be the difference between something like classic Ultraman and like modern 
some modern sentai, like, there's some common writers where they just feel like cash grabs. Like, mm. every few minutes they have, like, a weapon right, that's, yeah. like, a toy. Or, like, when you watch Pretty Cure, it's it just so saccharine. So and... bright. I actually I despise Pretty Cure. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that there's, like, some merit to it, and I'm sure a lot of people love it. But I think the aesthetic is, like, really hard to look at. And, like, you'll see, like, posters and stuff here. And it's just, like, color. But not in, like, a considered way. It's just, like, a bunch of bright colors. Because, like, there's a movie coming out. And it's got like all of the pretty cur- pretty cures in it, and there's like so many of them from like so many different eras or whatever, and they all have different styles, but they're trying to like squish them together, uh, yeah, and it's yeah. like weird, and I don't, I don't like it. Um, and and I think okay, here's another hot take. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is hundred percent true. I have suspicion that a lot of these pretty pretty cure animes that are made for a ma- uh, made for Females, like children. Yeah that they're made by men. Oh, totally. And then Sailor Moon was made by a woman. Well, here's the thing, too. I think that makes it better. Yeah, I really do think that that is the case. And I think, um, well, the anime actually wasn't made by any women. The Um, anime. Sure, I'm talking about, I guess I'm talking about the But yeah, the manga, obviously the original thing. And so there are differences in the way that the 90s TV show is versus the source material. But I think it is still pretty true to the source material compared to like other things. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're you're not wrong. I think a lot of it is just like executives. And a lot of the people, well, that's the thing. So I was going to say, like a lot of the people who make Pretty Cure made Sailor Moon. Or like, it's the same, like, because it's Toei. It's the same studio. So I, th- I feel like they're just taking the parts of Sailor Moon that worked from a commercial perspective and like not having any real story, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know Pretty Cure's story. So I, don't come at me in the, like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Me. Young Japanese. Like, I've tried to watch Pretty Cure, like, many times, but it's just so immature that I, like, find it, like, yeah. boring. Yeah. She's not the target audience. Yeah. You uh, know. Uh, favorite book is Dig, 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 And Noni says it's easier to learn Japanese than you think. It's a lot simpler than English, but a lot easier to mess up the conversation. Uh, yeah. There's things about it that are easier. Like, uh, learning basic conversation, because it's a... It's more formulated in uh, some way. It's more yeah. formulaic in some way. So, there... And pronunciation is a bit... Uh, more straight simpler and yeah there's only like one way to read a sound usually yeah. so that's easier but because it's such a high context language there are things the nuance of yeah. it is hard yeah like i think one of the biggest mistakes we make as english speakers trying to learn japanese or speak japanese is we try to like learn everything and say everything like do a translation which right. is not how language one to works. one like it's very common like a textbook japanese right like watashi no namai wa this. Yeah. Like, nobody talks like that. You don't really use watashi that often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But what you're more likely to say is, like, ah, kato tomo shimasu. So, yeah. Right. You just say your name. Like, you, yeah. Because, it, like, Japanese is, wait, how do you say it? Like, you can drop a lot of it. It's um, a pro drop language. It's a pro drop language. So, yeah. most people who speak it natively don't speak it grammatically correct, right? Yeah. A textbook grammatically. Yeah. And that's a double edged sword, too, because. It's because it's not so explicit. It makes it if hard. you're not an native speaker, if someone could say something to you and be leaving something out that they just expect you to know, right. and you're like, uh, I don't know what I that know. means contextually. Without the like extra context, it's hard for us to like parse. Yeah, like you have to be able to read the context mm. sometimes. So anyway, that's so the like thing. fundamentally Japanese isn't so hard. Gramma- yeah, like a lot of the grammar. Well, the, the grammar, grammar is, is kind of tricky. Grammar can be yeah, can get kind of hard and especially the higher level grammar. Basic grammar is not so hard, but yeah. and there's a lot of like specific things, words that can be used mul- in multiple ways depending and on the context. Counting is weird. Yeah, the and way the particle, yeah. Anyway, it can, be, it can be tricky. Um, but it is, I think, in a lot of ways easier than English in that, you know, there's only one way to pronounce most things, yeah, you know, like yeah. English has a lot of weird words that mean many different things and stuff. Yeah. Like, when you're watching TV, if something's delicious, it's either oishi or umai. My. That's it's it. not going to be, oh, this is buzzing, oh, this is delicious, oh, right. man, this is dope. Ah, uh, that's not true. You say yabai. Yabai, I guess you Oh, say yabai. yabai. Yeah. Oh, yabai. Yeah. That works. Sure. That's kind of the same. Yeah, but, yeah, the nuance of yabai, though, is a bit like, oh. Oh, yeah, yabai is weird, because yabai is a negative and a positive. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. Oh, I feel like yabai is the closest to fuck in English, the way yeah, that it can pretty, be used. I've heard that, yeah. It's, it's pretty flexible. Like, it's not as maybe, yeah. like powerful like as far as like bad words Mm go but you can use it in the same way that you can you can use it like sure sure uh i could agree with that uh alter said because of the tone oh yeah so that's because of like uh sailor moon right Mm. the tone of of sailor moon being uh slightly different and sailor moon deals with lots of heavy subjects and does well 
and it's honestly perfect in how it deals with its subject matter. I think so too. Yeah. I think, yeah, it deals with, like, death and, like, complex relationships. I think Car Captor Sakura is also really good about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it can be really mature when it needs to be, and it's really good. But I don't think Precure is very mature. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know. Oh, we got some Japanese in chat. Mm -hmm. Um, So, (laughs) Chugoku Jin da Takara da yo. Nihon ni... How do you do that kanji? Ni... Ah, Kika. Kika. So, Kika. So, Nihon ni Kika shtanda. So, like Chinese, Chinese because you're because, because you're Chinese. Chi- because of Chinese, English, uh, Chinese people. Uh, Nihon ni change it to you're able to change it to Chinese. It it was came from China, Chinese, uh, so or it was naturalized from China. from from kanji. Yeah, yeah. It was naturalized to Japan. Mm. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. Did you know that? Japan didn't have a writing system until it got it from China. That's right, yeah. And Korea used to have a system like that. Which is kind of wild to think. I can't imagine living in a world where you don't write things. It's just, like, so natural to do that. I can't imagine what that is like, not having a writing system. Not have... Yeah, it's... Well, writing systems in the scope of human history are... Are pretty relatively new. Is it? Well, that's true. I mean, I guess it goes hand in hand with civilization. I mean, we've always had, like, pictographs and stuff like that, I think. Mm. But it's, like, sharing them and, like, everybody being able to understand them across different, like, regions and areas or tribes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rare. Or new. Because, like, printing, you know, had to become a thing before people could, like, share writing universally or, like, you know, copying and stuff like that. Like, Mm -hmm. writing was, like, a privilege, right? And it, yeah, I mean, it was still for, like, the merchant class and above. There's a new Boruto. What uh, was that? There's a new Boruto. There's a new... I don't sorry, know, I'm just watching just, this commercial. Sorry, I just, I just got an ad as well for Boruto Generations. Does everyone see the commercial same thing as we do? Wait, is there... Is it another Boruto? Yeah. Is Boruto's son? <laughs> commercial... Yeah, Boruto is not the son. No, is... No, the next generation is it about Boruto's son. Uh, yeah, the next generation. No! Is, oh, I, Boruto's son. Oh, you mean the, there's a Boruto son? Yeah, I'm asking, because it's like Boruto, the next generation. Is that, that's not Boruto. No, no, Boruto, next generation is next generation of Naruto. But that's new. Yeah, yeah, so. Boruto's what? old, right? Is there a new Boruto? That's what like I'm Boruto? asking, because there's like a commercial for Boruto. Is there more Boruto or something? Is there a new, is, you're saying, is there Boruto? I'm, I mean, I'm making a joke, like, is there... Boruto's son, but like it's like Boruto the next generation. So that seemed like a new thing, but I, I couldn't see what the actual trailer was for. Like, was it for a VHS or I don't know? I don't know. I never cared about Naruto. Sorry, no hate. I don't like new Naruto, Bor- I don't like Boruto so much. Don't like, personally. but do you like Boruto's dad? Hmm? You like Boruto's dad? I like the early Naruto, um, then I don't like how a lot of the characters developed, especially the women. Yeah. Because he can't write women. And China, uh, so no name saying that uh, China used to have dozens of written languages for centuries. Centuries for separate of China simplified language a few centuries ago, and it's been pretty much the same ever since, to the best of their knowledge. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I don't know enough about the the history of the Chinese written language to speak with any kind of authority on that. I've heard it said that they're trying, they're they're thinking about simplifying Japanese more. I, I, re- I read that somewhere fairly recently, like some of the kanji and stuff. Yeah. And kanji has been simplified in Japanese from Chinese. Like, there right, right. are several kanji that aren't the it's, same anymore. It's, yeah, it's, uh, not that many if you think about it. There's like 2,000 kanji you have to learn, which is a lot, but. I mean, if you think of them as words and not like, you know, like, if you think of them as, like, the words that you know as a person, right? It's not that many, because we know a lot of words, right? But it's, like, learning how to write them is hard. Sure. More than anything. For me, anyway. It's, yeah, you have to kind of still kind of learn the constituent parts for it to make sense. There's a pretty, a good reference to start with, which I, I don't think you have really looked at, is remembering the kanji. Um, people have different, people, some people hate it, some people like it. But what it's good for is is sort of training the initial stages of remembering some basic kanji and the constituent parts. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of important um, if you're coming at it as a second language reader and speaker. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I know about, like, making your stories about them and stuff. I do that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the one that is kata. Oh, sure, like, uh... I, I always envision person. it as a person running with, like, a piece of something. <laughs> sure, yeah. That, they can... Yeah, making little stories like that are definitely good as, as mnemonic type things. Um, I saw one for, what was it, somaru is one, which means to dye things. Mm. Uh, let me see if I can find the kanji. So, There's uh, a really good Instagram channel that comes up yeah. sometimes with a guy who looks like Bob Ross, but he's Japanese, but he does, like, kanji stories. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? Uh, no, like I've seen a few of them. He does a lot of basic kanji. Yeah. yeah it's but, fun. But here's a good one. Uh, that try, try writing this real quick. Somaru, to, to be dyed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad at stroke order, so nobody come at me about my stroke order. So we got a river and a five, right? It's like go. Right? Uh, I would say nine. That's nine. Oh, sorry. I don't know. I'm bad at counting. Oh my god, I'm so bad at kanji. Uh, and then a forest yeah. or a tree, a tree right yeah. there. So this kanji is often read as somaru, which is to be dyed or to be tainted or to be infected, to be steeped in something. And the way the book kind of describes it, when you build up to it, is like the left side is kind of like water, mm -hmm. the right side is kind of like nine, and the bottom is tree. So it's like nine hues or of colors, sort of being coming from like raining down on a tree, a tree. <laughs> and you dyeing it in your colors. So you create these tiny stories, mm. but you sort of remember them, and even though it doesn't make sense. It works. It works for a second language speaker to, like, remember the kanji. Like, I remember Somaru, and I remember the constituent parts because of, like, this story. <laughs> I'm so bad at writing kanji. Yeah, I'm, I'm really bad at writing kanji because I feel like I can never get the, like, space right. I always feel like my sure. kanjis are too long. Mm, and then, like, the, fl the, the flow of it, too, it feels more Western than, like... Yeah, it's because it's like when I watch my, like, I would watch, like, students write the alphabet and stuff. Even, I mean, even, like, your, your, your Ren does it, too. Yeah. Like, they don't, because it's not native, right, everybody has, like, different ways that they learn how to write stuff, right? Mm -hmm. For example, Ren makes his A's like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's because... Which is very reads. Japanese, right? It's kind of like... Yeah. Uh, it's it's a bit like a O, right? Yeah, it's like a typeface. It's a serif A. Or right? no. <laughs> it's a bit like a no. Sure, sure. Like the way that he's approaching the stroke is different from mm -hmm. like how you I and I learn. Yeah. yeah. And my writing is terrible. My handwriting is terrible, as you know from. Thank you, Chris. But I. Uh, but I, I. That's because I like reading. Oh, dare, dare, dare. Sketchy Bravo! <laughs> What's that? Sketchy Bravo! What's up, Sketch Sketch Bravo? Sketchy Bravo. In the uh, YouTube, so yeah, you're over in the YouTube, in the YouTube chat, which we also welcome. Uh, you can just use Google Translate. It works for me when you need to write your pen name in Japanese. So yeah, yeah. Google Translate can be useful, but um, it can be it can you also have goofy to be, too. <laughs> yeah, it can be goofy, and also you have to be careful about nuance. It doesn't show you. Yeah, it also doesn't show you like reading sometimes, so that can be kind of tricky. I like to use. I like to just use a dictionary, so when I don't know a word, I try to, you know, just r look up the words and look up the constituent parts. And it takes longer, but you end up, like, remembering a lot, a lot of stuff that way. There's something weird that it translated recently. What was that? I... Oh. oh sorry, 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 sorry. What was that? I don't remember. Uh, sorry, we got, a, we got another Sailor Moon track for you to, to reminisce on from No Name. If it, it better be Watash Touch and you know you don't have to... Is that this? Uh, dude, I used to, I don't know the Japanese version, but I used to have the like, oh wait, no, this is the English one, isn't it? Where I standing in the night. <laughs> I used to have the CD. I think he just like jumped into it. My crescent wand, the only light. Alone against my darkest fears, but I sense my friends are near. I'll draw from each the power I need. The evil queen we will defeat. Give me the strength to carry on. This song is like look here, Bob. With all our love, we can't go wrong. I used to have this CD, man. Only together we face the fight. Nothing can stand against our might. Dude, it was always like a moment when this song would come on in Sailor Moon. You're like, whoa! Is this like a battle song? Yeah, this is when they fight Queen Barrel. Oh. 
do, 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 do. I think it's original, actually. I don't even know if there's a Jap- Is there a Japanese parallel to this one? Is this a, a, a remake of a song? Give me the strength hey. to carry on. It goes. With all our love, we can't another, go wrong. This is another um, nominee for a jam session song. Only <laughs> together we face the fight. This is like a gym song. Stand against the right. Like Jim and the Holograms. All right. With all our love, we can't go wrong. I feel like that's what they were going for with Sailor Moon in the West. I was just trying to be a new gem, like the Japanese inflected gem and holograms. Well, it wasn't even Japanese. They completely, basically in the original one, they totally ignore the fact that it's Japan. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was just, I just... That's why her name is Serena. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, Sarina. Sarina could be a Japanese name. Yeah, but it's not... It's yeah. Serena. Sadina. Serena Sadina. and Darian. Darian. And Amy is still Amy, but I mean, Ami, Ami is Ami, Ami but yeah, yeah. they just change it to Amy. Oh, true. And then Minako becomes Mina. Oh, right. right. And then uh, Makoto becomes Rita, or Lita. And then Ray is Ray. Right. So they just totally try to localize it the best they Amy, can. Mina, Lena, Lita, yeah. and Ray. I don't get that. Why, why not just like keep it in the country? Cause it's not really because not Because back in, remember, they're like... No one will understand this. This is back when sushi was new in America. That's so. right. Goku was like, no one will know what that means. His name's right. Zero. Zero. Yeah, his name's Zero. Sure. So, sure. yeah, no. Yeah. So they just basically took away all of the Japanese-ness of it. They even got rid of episodes that were like too Japanese uh, in weird. the original one. Yeah. Uh, a sketch also says that um, 80s, 90s J-pop was the butt wave, not gonna lie. And also, you want to low-key watch Bulk Bulk Crisis. Oh, man, Bulk Bulk Crisis. I never watched I never Bulk Crisis. I never watched Bulk Crisis, but I was aware of it. Yeah, I do dig it. I do dig it. Um, I wish they would remaster all these, like, old anime, but, like, I feel like it'll never happen because Japan just, like, doesn't care about it like that. Sure. You know, it's always just about, like, going forward, you know? Unless it's like a really big anime, but then I feel like they just remake it. They don't like remaster it. Oh right, right, right. Like kind of what they're doing with not. Aren't they doing that with Naruto? They're just like they're re- just remaking it. Yeah, and that's what they did with Sailor Moon. You know, they just remade it, way worse. Yeah, yeah. I w- I saw those videos. Dude, dude, man, they messed yeah. up Sailor Moon. Uh, no name saying Sailor Moon's free on YouTube. Is that true? Is it all on YouTube? Uh, in Japanese, yeah. Oh, I think so. Toei, Toei yeah. release. Because then, they have the new one, so I don't care. And the Japanese version, the opening theme plays during the final battle, and it was hype as fuck. Yeah. And one of the gay villains is a woman in the U.S. Sailor Moon. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> they just make them one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they did that a lot. There's actually more than one. There's, um, so there's Zoisite. Which is a boy who is in love with another boy, yeah. uh, Kunzite or Malachite. So you just make him like a tomboy. Or this something? is an interesting one. So in the English version, his name is Malachite. Yeah. In the Japanese version, his name is Kunzite. Okay. I don't know why they changed that, but they are both real things. Like they're just stone names. They're all different types of jade: mm-hmm. Jedite, Nephrite, and Malachite, and or Kunzite and like Nephrite. Sure. Uh, but I don't know why they changed that. But anyway, Zoisite is in love with Malachite, but to make it less gay, they just made him into a her. And so without yeah. the character. Uh, kinda. Um, she's not even, she just, I mean, he, they, they, Zoisite is like just really... Wait, you're gonna look it up instead of drawing it from memory first? Uh, no, I can't remember what Zoisite looks like. <laughs> yeah. This is a boy. But they just made Zoisite a girl. Um, oh, I see. Wait, are you looking at it on the screen, too? Oh, yeah. okay, I see. So, yeah, this is Zoisite. Zoisite's the one on the left. This one. So, I see, I see. So, this they is, just, they they just, just try made to make a girl. him a, a, she. a she. Even though, I, well, I guess women don't have to have boobs, so that's, <laughs> that's valid. But, yeah, it, he he is a boy. He's just like the bishi, you know? There's this one, and then there's also Fisheye, who is, like, even more so, like, uh, not Fisheye Lens, but Fisheye 
Yeah. Uh, Fisheye is, like, they dress up in, like, female clothes a lot. So they just, instead of, like, trying to explain that Fisheye, you know, is a boy who, is likes, a boy who likes to dress up as a girl. Is a villain, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now, do you think they just change it because they don't want the Western audience dealing with, at that time, uh, you know, LGBT type things, or do they do it because it's so clearly villain coded? No, 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 no. It's definitely just because it's confusing for the for like children. Because back then, like, so yeah, fisheye, fisheye is like a they kind of. I don't. I think fisheye. I think fisheye believed that on the inside, you know, he is a she. Uh, I see. So technically, I think fisheye yeah, is just trans. Yeah. But that's too confusing for kids, so they just got rid of that. And there's also, you know, obviously, you know, um, have do you know about uh, these ones? Oh they, yeah, yeah, and about the yeah. cousins, the cousins Uranus and Neptune. These cousins, these very good cousins. They're very, yeah, they're very they're very good cousins. <laughs> they're yeah. just cousins, you guys. They're very close. I was so confusing as a child. Honestly, them making them cousins made everything more confusing. Because, like, why are these cousins so close? It's not cool. It's weird. Yeah, because even from when I was young, I knew what a gay person was. Right. We we all knew. Like, maybe, you know, some people liked the same gender. Yeah. And that was fine in, like, a kid's head. Like, I don't think it's that weird. But they made it more weird. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, yeah, strange. So, we thank you for coming to Sailor, the Sailor Moon chat, where we talk I about all things Sailor Moon. I do love Sailor Moon. Um, and so Tony said that the later seasons weren't released due to the Sailor Moon stars being men that transformed into women. Oh, yeah, that's true. The Starlights. And, yeah, and yeah, Naoko Takeuchi was progressive as fuck. Although, it's interesting. So, in the anime, they are men who turn into women. But that's not how it is in the manga. In the manga, they are always women. But they dress like men. <laughs> Ah, I see. Yeah. So they they interesting. So they the animators made the choice. The showrunners made the choice of making them make in. And I think that also is like a weird like Japanese like like, like conservatism they d- because they did because Usagi has a relationship with one of them, mm. like romantically. So like, it's better. They kiss and stuff. It's better if they transform. Yeah. Because like, Rama wasn't like that, right? Yeah. Rama, Rama was hella like that was one of my favorite shows. Very gender know. swappy, right? And to me, I'm just like, yeah, it's cool. When he's a man, he's a man. When 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 she's a woman, she's a woman. Right. Uh, and you know, inside she's a man, but sometimes she's a woman, yeah. and I still have a crush on her. I get it. <laughs> sure. I get it. Rama, yeah, Rama. One half was like hell. <laughs> That shit was, like, super... But, um... Maybe that's why I'm so, like, eh, that's fine, you know? Mm. But, yeah, so, uh, it's weird that they made that choice for Japan, specific. Like, why change them into men who turn into women when they could just be women who turn into women? Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway, they made it weirder, somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, we do like Takeuchi in this house. Yes. And, and all the things coming. I wish you'd make more Sailor Moon. I like that this character... Is it kind of in that vibe? Like, like uh, gender yeah, feels, fluid? Yeah, feels pretty gender fluid. Get it, because they're, they're water. They. She feels pretty gender fluid. They. They feel, they, they feel very gender fluid. Yes. I like it. It's fun. So, are you, are you digging this? Are you, are you digging this, um... I dig Our it. style, this fantasy... Can be a, an artist for the book for our book series, Legends of Avalon. Of Avalon. Avalon. Now, by the way, plugs for our stuff. So I, uh, yeah, if you like role playing games, check out my book that I write, Legends of Avalon. I guess I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. We're on Modifius, which is a they make the Dune board game, at D- Dune role playing game, and board game as well. Oh, okay, interesting. Sorry, no name, just spill some facts. So Takeuchi always wanted stars to be men that transform into women, but her publisher wouldn't let her with the manga but she was ah, i see okay that's interesting though like why wouldn't the publishers allow that i wonder uh, if they already had like uranus and neptune and that was fine interesting weird well yeah. she was a visionary <laughs> she was a visionary uh, you know shoujo manga did a whole lot to progress like lgbtq visibility mm-hmm. in japan i think it's car captor Sakura, like Clamp. All of Clamp is like very, very queer. Sure. Yeah, there's lots of queer characters in Clamp. Uh, Clamp is four, four female writers. Right? I think so. I yeah, think there's four, four, four of them. Four. There's it's a it's a group. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I want to share my hot take about female authors. Can I do that? Shows up, 
I think that when female authors are great, they're almost always just better than male authors because they're forced to grow up with so much male written media mm. and they they're better at adopting than men who almost always just read like author like male authors mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and so they're not as flexible in writing interesting characters in that way so i mean obviously there's great male authors mm-hmm. obviously but some of my favorite authors like virginia wolf uh was it suzanne um she wrote a on my shelf actually uh suzanne clark uh, who wrote Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell who wrote about two men mm. but she writes them so well and so insightfully and the female characters are also great mm. um, and Naoko Ta- Taguchi right like mm. she's writing like female characters within even though it's be- how do you say it? Be- it's shoujo. shoujo it still feels also shonen like male yeah. audience friendly Yeah. so female authors who, who are successful have to sort of figure out how to blend to those things. I, I yeah, I agree with you. I think also, I think, also my hot take, I think the best, some of the best shonen that have ever existed were written by women. Mm. Like Inuyasha. Yeah. Ranma. Ranma, sure. Uh, Sailor Moon, arguably, is like in that weird world of Sentai Shoujo shonen. Mm. Um, Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. yeah. Amazing character Obviously, it'll story. Be- uh, good writing it doesn't matter what your, your obviously your, not your, your gender doesn't gender matter per se matter. but I think I think you're right because the forces you know, involved yeah like culturally speaking I think it's nothing to do with like skill like inherent yeah. skill it's like yeah. the way that you have to go through the world and like process the world yeah. can change like, the way that you yeah. interpret it right yeah. Virginia Woolf wrote A Room of One's Own <laughs> and she argued about like how important it is for female women creators to have their own space to mm. create in. Mm. And she was well, from a place of privilege to recognize that, but she recognized that, that to be a good creator, you need that space and that privilege mm. to do that thing in the first place. Uh, big ups to Virginia Woolf, if you haven't read any of Virginia Big ups Wolf. to Virginia Woolf! She is, like, dead-ass one of my favorite writers of all time. Because uh, she's fucking amazing. Like, she wrote such, like, insane stream of consciousness shit from different people's point of views in, like, the early 20th century, and it still holds up. Like, like these strong female characters that had to appeal to a male audience as well. Mm. <laughs> and that's fucking amazing. I don't know. Like, I, she, she's still... She's, like, one of my ghosts, for sure. I don't know why, but in my head canon, Virginia Woolf is a black lady. Um, I don't know why that is. Interesting. It just sounds like a black lady name. Just I don't Virginia Woolf? Yeah. Uh, is it because... Let me see who wrote... So who's afraid of Virginia Woolf who wrote that? No, that's by Edward Albee. No, it's got nothing to do with anything else. It's just the name just, sounds it like... It just feels like a black one. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I don't know. Maybe I just like the name, so I'm like, oh, I like that name. Yeah. It's me. I'm Virginia Woolf. Uh, and there are a lot of politics going on with publications in Japan. Yeah, manga, oh, yeah. manga, manga industry is and really bad. Have very different, different rules and laws in Japan. Yeah, there's... Yeah, the politics here are, can be tricky. And even... Even though there's spaces that are open for... It's weird, right? Like, there's spaces that are open and, and people are very welcoming because I think individual liberty is very important. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time... But at the same time, you could easily get bullied for being... Different, different. in any kind yeah. of way. So if you don't follow gender norms. Yeah. Yeah, big ups, uh, big props to Rumiko Takashi for writing strong characters of all genders, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rama one half is another one. <laughs> Isn't it Rama half? In English, I mean, I'm saying how how I heard it in English. Oh. Yeah, it's English. It w- I guess they it would be... They say one half. It would be Rama half. I thought it was Rama half. Right? Yeah. Um, but I've always heard it pronounced as... R- because one, that fraction is often said as one half. Eh? Because it was a half. It's one I'll half just of say half. I, I, I'm just I never that. said one half in any, any context. I wouldn't say one half. I would say half. Okay, well, if it's one and four, how would you say that? A fourth. Yeah, one fourth. I would say one a fourth. fourth. I don't. Maybe it's a regional thing. I don't say one anything. Like, well, you're saying it because it's one half. It's like the. No, no I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand what that means, but I'm saying I think regionally I don't say that. Saying, I say a half, a quarter, a fourth. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if it's two four. I say two fourths. Two fourths. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I say two. For fourth, whatever yeah. reason, the one is never a one. Uh-huh. It's always an uh. Is that? Mm, I wonder if that's also a, a, is that a cooking thing? Maybe. Like a half of something? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say like one half cup of, but people do. I just don't. Yeah. Because you say one half cup as opposed to one and a half cups. Mm. Yeah. That, yeah. But I would just say one and a half cup. Right, right. 
I wouldn't say one and one half cup, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's just the way my language is. Sure. But yeah. So I've always said ram a half. Uh, yeah, I've, that's, so you wrote, you said ram a half. I always heard of different people differences. That's funny. And no one says it in the show, right? No one calls him Ranma. Right, Ranma. Yeah. It's just the name of the show. So yeah. no one ever calls him Ram, Rama half. Kind of How about up. you guys? Are you a one half yeah. or half yeah. person? Yeah, Sketch has some uh, interesting ideas in the YouTube chat that, uh, like how in the U.S. the narrative that Uranus and Neptune were cousins. Yeah, we talked about that. In Japan, they were smashing. Now it's woke, quote unquote. Yeah. The manga industry is that bad? Yes, you're gonna go indie. Yeah, in the U.S. they have rum, rum uh, one half. So they say one rum uh, one half. Mm. Well, no. So yeah, Chrissy saying that in her part of the U.S. Mm. What part are you from, Sketch? Without you know, if you don't uh, mind maybe sharing. Maybe it's just a me thing. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have friends who watched anime, so I don't know how other people were saying it. To be fair, because Ranma one over two. <laughs> Run, don't like that Ranma denominator one uh, numerator one and, wait which one is it numerator two denominator's on top right I don't remember no denominator's on the bottom I feel like fractions was for for whatever reason fractions no, was where I started to check out of math <laughs> as a child uh, yeah so denominator's the bottom number the two numerators why is that I'm wondering I, 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 I think fractions was the first point in math where I was like nah. I think what happens with fractions is, I think teachers have to be really, really careful with it because they start to abstract them too much mm-hmm. when really they represent them something like a that, physical thing. A physical thing. Yeah. And so we do have that, I think, in elementary school, right, where you have like pictures of things, pictures yeah. of things, and we're trying to indicate, um, but it gets really dicey the harder the fractions become. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you're adding fractions together, right, if you say. When they present problems, I kind of vaguely remember them saying, well, something is one-third, and another thing is three-fifths. How do you do it? And then you have to multiply them and all that stuff. Yeah, I think I, I started to stop caring when it came down to, like, multiplication, division, and stuff mm-hmm. with fractions. Because mm-hmm. it just didn't make sense in my head. Yeah. And I, I, I'm sure, you know, I can do it, but, like, I just... If you visualize it, it becomes, I think better like if you put them on a table or something but sure, then that yeah. takes a lot of space right you can't just like go around doing that you know uh, which i think we can now because i think that's a problem with textbooks too of the time right when we were younger yeah like you have to put things information onto a, a paper page and so the tools that we're using to mediate our learning are restricted but hypothetically video and like an ipad canvas mm-hmm. don't have that same restriction that's true so when i teach well, when i teach ren how to do fractions uh I'm going to do that. I'm not going to, like, let it be... He'll limited. probably teach you how to do fractions. Hopefully he'll teach me how to do fractions. He's yeah. smart. I feel like that's easy stuff for him. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, oh, yeah. So, Nuneo says, big up, uh, big up to Rumiko R- Takashi for uh, bringing Chinese culture to Japan, which is all but unheard mm. of in the 80s Japan. Um, yeah, that, the, the whole, the fact that he, uh, do you know, did you watch Rama 1 half? What half? <laughs> Rama 1 over 2? No, I haven't actually. Yeah, a big part of the plot is the fact that uh, him and his dad are martial artists and they mm. go to China to train. And uh. that's how they, there's like a, a thousand cursed pools or something. Oh, I see. Where every pool had a different tragic story mm. and that's what you turn into. So that's funny. Rama goes into the cursed, the, the drowned, drowned girl pool. <laughs> and then another character goes into the drowned piglet. Oh, and I another see. One, the there's like a panda or yeah, something. It's really yeah. absurd. Very creative. Um, it's interesting, too, because, well, I haven't seen Ranma. Uh, I do know in Inuyasha, too, they talk, there's a bit, a bit of, like, Chinese culture in it, too, because there are, like, gods that will come from the the West, mm-hmm. you know? The right, or, right, like, is it, how do you say? North? Akita? Japan, or China from Japan is to, well, West? Uh, I guess it's West of Japan, yeah. Right, but there's, like, the gods that come from, like, the big land or whatever, and right. they're all Chinese, and it's, like, different stuff, like from their culture is like sure. blended into the story in like J- Japanese culture is cool yeah that, that's fun stuff yeah big, definitely big up for that there's also the other one that I had I used to watch what was it called Ren Renny 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 I can't remember there's another series yeah, that a, she a did you have? no that's Nino Kuni that's different no uh, by the Inuyasha author let's look it up Renny I think. Rumiko Takahashi. Also in the chat, uh, Sketch mentions that they're from Queens. Okay. Queens. Queens. Did yeah. they say one half? They say one half. Yeah, yeah, I said one half. So. 
Yeah, it's a very cosmopolitan thing. You would understand uh, it. I guess. Well, I'm a country girl from the Midwest, <laughs> and we say half. Ran the half. Yeah, let's see Rumiko Takahashi's work. So they have, uh... It's like Renny or Ren. How do you look at her bibliography? Major work. Uh, major works are Ren... Renne. 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 I, I was watching that for a while. Chokai no Rinne. Renne of the Boundary. Mm. It's pretty cool. It was funny. It felt like an Inuyasha Ranma mix. So, this is the plot. Sakura... Sakura Mamiya is a high school girl who came able to see ghosts after she was spirited away for a week when she was a child, though she does not remember the details. And once in high school, she wishes to be rid of her extrasensory perception, which is an annoyance to her. No one else brought her from sea spirits. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I need to do more research on supernatural and horror manga and anime for a project I want to work on in the future. So that'll be one I watch. I was going to say, that one might be good. Yeah. Uh, there's another one that's really good. Do, do you like horror, horror, manga, and anime in general? Um, I mean, I'm not like opposed to it, but I guess I don't seek it out or you don't anything. Want to look for it. It's not like a genre that I'm like excited about per se. I got you. I just never been that big into horror in general, I guess. Mm. But it's not like I don't like it. I just mm-hmm. don't like. That'd be good. It can't just be like sh- shock, shock value stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like you like Attack on Titan and there's like yeah and there's there. like horror there but yeah. and I like uh, Made in Abyss but it's more like you know body horror sure yeah I, I guess I do need to watch that and he says uh, but yeah Chinese culture didn't show his face a whole lot in Japan until the 80s and Rama half one half was a big one Dragon Ball being the other big one of the 80s uh, because it's basically Journey to the West it know? literally is yeah what were the big the, I feel like the big 80s anime were that Rama Macross was probably mm. the big one. Macross is huge. And Gundam, Gundam and Macross. But I felt like Macross, because it's of funny. Robotech. You say Gun- Gundam like a Japanese person. Gundam. But Americans say Gundam. 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 What did I say? You said like Gun- Gundam. Gun- Gundam. Gundam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I never really watched Gundam or uh, Macross. I only watched Gundam OAth MST. I don't know. It's a good one. It's different, though. It's not like... It's, like, about robots, but it's more, like, mature. Mm. It's good. I liked it. I watched it on Adult Swim, I think. You should watch it. Well, no, after we get through all the horror manga and anime that we need to watch. Too many things to watch. Yeah. Um, you're, I think you're coming to a pretty good point with this. Like, what else do you have to do with this piece? Well. Also, we're getting to lunchtime. I'm getting peckish. Well, I, I have to, like, <laughs> color it more. Sketch says we say in Queens, uh, we say half in Queens, just as much as we say, yer. <laughs> <laughs> what is yer? Yer. I don't know yer. that one. Is it like yes, like yer? yer. I'm from Los Angeles, so I don't know enough about New York culture. Yeah. Yeah. But Queen, no, I like. I I went to New York a few times. First time I was like, oh, this is fine. Second time I was like, oh, I can understand living here. I go a third time. Yeah, the problem I think with New York, <clears throat> like the first time you go, you just end up going to all the like touristy things. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, this is fun, I guess. But then if you go to New York by yourself or like for no real specific reason, it's way more cool. Like right. going to like the places that people yeah. really live. Just like, enjoy it. I like Greenwich Village and I like, um, I forget what it's called. But. The place where the comedy cellar is. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Is that Greenwich Village, maybe? Maybe. I like that area a lot. You went there too, right? I did. I yeah. went to Smalls. I went to a jazz club there. Oh, I see. It was funny because, like, it was a great trio of quartet playing. Mm. At, and after they finish, like, you know, there's some guy, but he did the typical, like, pretentious, like, yeah, they're all right, but the the, the group before was like a lot better, a lot right, tighter, okay. a lot better. Like, all right, man. Okay, cool guys. Y'all get to see like tight ja- like jazz <laughs> quartet, world class players all the time. Yeah, that's like East Coast it- attitude. No offense, because I used to I used to go to school there, so I've been around East Coast people. They don't know how good they got it. It's kind of like California yeah, yeah. people. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Who don't know how good they have it. Like where you're from, where I'm from, it's just like you're happy anything is happening that's different. <laughs> But, like, New York people have, like, in New York, there's so much talent that the standard for, like, what good talent is is so much higher. So people will complain about stuff more than you might if you're not from there. Yeah. That's such a that's such a TV show type moment of, like, mm, this is so good. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. 
But it's I, true. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought that if you went to LA, you would have enjoyed it for a bit. Probably. So shame you was there. Maybe one day. You know, Maybe. You know. When I'm too. It's just too expensive. Yeah. It's just expensive. That's the only, the only problem. I don't think you're ever too old to go to LA either. I think LA is a good spot to retire in. I mean, if, yeah, if I would, you could afford to retire yeah, there. I was gonna say if I if I could afford a extended life in. Uh, oh, that's fine. I'm not doing this here. Oops. Oh, so Sketch said that um, they love the village, and so your means yo in New York. Your and uh, and you miss New York, but you live in Florida now. I, ugh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, how do you like Florida? That's the question. And and you're not wrong about the talent thing. Mm. Yeah. So, I agree with it. I think... Um, the bar is high on the east. The bar is high. Yeah, LA is different, right? Because in LA, there's a lot of talented people, but I f- it feels more commercial. Yeah. Like, when I go to New it's York... It's not like high art. Yeah. In New York, when you go to, like, smallest people are, like... Obviously, they're getting paid, but it does feel like they're they're trying to be part of the culture mm-hmm. whereas Los Angeles it's like alright well where's my next gig. it's like gig culture and yeah. I gotta be careful about that because I fall into that too about the gig culture and I get it mm. you know? I know that's my Los Angeles hustle side coming through it's your culture yeah um yeah but... Kansas City people are just happy to have anything exciting happen yeah like I used to have because I used to work at a guitar shop like a boutique guitar shop where like two thousand dollars was cheap for a guitar if you sold a thousand dollar guitar, it's like, eh, I don't know. So like you're, so I know you'd have guys come in Crazy. who were like musicians, who were like professionals or whatever, and they were okay, but they didn't play classical. But they had the money, like, oh yeah, I like this guitar. And they would buy like a nine thousand dollar guitar because what? they liked it, not because they were like professional players on Why? classical, or they 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 thought they could use it for like, oh, it was a composer for um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh. He was a good player. He was a really good player. Um, but he wasn't the classical player, but he just, mm. like, found a guitar he liked that I liked, and, and I helped him out with it. And he was a composer on, like, movies and stuff. Um, and mm. that was so weird to me. And now, for at the time, it was like, okay, this is just how it is. That's and true. now it's like, it's so fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird culture, man. I don't know. It's, it's completely mm. divorced from... I think that's... So, I feel like that's something that a lot of the rest of the country doesn't understand about, like, the middle of America. Yeah. It's like... If you see people talking about stuff like that, yeah. like buying stuff like that, it becomes really frustrating when you can't afford to like feed your family and stuff like that. And so like ho- like people's like attitude about Hollywood I think comes from that. Like why are you telling me how to live my life because you have everything and I don't have anything. Yeah. You know, like I think that's where a lot of the like disdain. The elitism, yeah. yeah. And I, I get that. I mean, for us, the weird thing is a lot of those customers were from, like, other places, but they sure. happen to be the rich people. But then they'll they'll forget. You know, they forget where they're from real quick. I mean, literally, they're from, like, Montana yeah. or yeah, Oklahoma yeah, yeah. or whatever. But people they're forget just, like, that. Yeah. But as soon as you live in L- L.A., you become L.A. It's, like, different. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the resentment in the middle of the country comes from for, Cal- like, Californian people specifically. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Not that it's right, you know, but... It is like a thing. Yeah. And a lot of people in LA, they're not from there and they adopt the vision of what it is, like mm-hmm. you're saying. Um, people do that in New York too, though. I mean, there's definitely people. I mean, even myself, probably. I tried to fit into the East Coast, like, you know, vibe because I wanted to be like the people around me. That's how people are. <laughs> but it's easy for people to just forget what it's like to have been where you were from. You know, because you don't want to be from there. Right. That's why you left, right? Yeah. But now we're in Japan. We're yeah. Japan. Okay, yeah. I'm never yeah. going back to Kansas City <laughs> to live. Yeah. Their name's giving a. <laughs> yeah, I like visiting. Secret Smile, Semi Sonic. So it reminds you of this. So you're saying that this uh, conversation, uh, this song reminds you of this conversation. Ooh, that's cool. That's a cool uh, Rhodes part. Nobody knows it, but you've got a secret smile. You have a secret smile. Do I? Tell me. It's 
pretty dope. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, I've never heard this song. Have you heard? Who is this? Semi Sonic. Um, I don't know Semi Sonic. It's yeah, a dope song. Yeah, good song. The, the keyboard part's really good in the song. Ooh. By the way, question for the chat. If you're in Twitch, there's a chance maybe it gave uh, three gifts, and I actually don't know how this works. Are so, they still there? Yeah, can you click on the gifts at the top that chance is giving to the chat, or is it to me? Or do I have to... Or do you have to do something? Let me see. I'm really bad at streaming. Okay, again, we're still learning how all this works. Uh, oh, no, no. Chance is number one. That's what that is. So you, you can give uh, to the So chain. gift to take, number uh, okay, two. So if someone gives a gift, they become a number two. But they have to give a bunch of gifts in the stream to get number three. Or to become number two, they have to give more. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, so hold on. Hmm. That's a cool change. Is this a popular band, or is this, Yeah, do like... you know, I've heard of this band, but I don't really know the band. It's like, Sammy Sonic, that's like a bug. So it's an American rock band formed in Minneapolis in 1995. I was going to say, it's giving me, like, WB. Yeah. Oh, they did Closing Time. Oh. Well, that song's way better than Closing Time. The song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a vibe. This feels like a song that I could uh, see our, us jamming at. Mm. This is a song that should be more popular than it probably That's is. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is better than Closing Time, I yeah. think. I mean, this was it. This video's from 2010, but at, like, 2 million views. So it's popular enough. Sure. But closing time. Closing time is a phenomenon. Closing, closing time, time has. Time. Closing time has 125 million views. Everybody knows this song. Closing. This should be the last song we play. I know who I want me home. Yeah. Ooh, here's a really here's a really hot question. Um, so Sketch is asking. Uh, no, Sketch says nah, They definitely do that in New York. I think referring to. Uh, to, are you are you referring to pretending to be uh, taking on the affectations oh, yeah. of the city? I'm yeah, thinking, yeah, because yeah, that's totally a vibe. Yeah. Everybody's like, I'm from New York now. I only wear black and <laughs> I wear a pea coat. I totally got a pea coat because I was very aware of the fact that like everybody wears pea coats in yeah, New York. Yeah. You cannot it wear. Cold, too. It is cold, but like you can't wear like a puffer jacket, or at least you couldn't back when I was like yeah. living up there. Everybody had to wear a pea coat. You had to wear black shirt and black jeans, and it's like the East Coast style, sure. and, or white t-shirt, like really simple, kind of like Tokyo, or like Japan, I guess, like mm -hmm. really, really like muted, homogenized mm. muted colors. Uh, Sketch is asking, um, what made y'all want to live in Japan, and do you find Japan better than the states? You want to feel that question? Uh, me or you? Uh, oh, and and uh, also before we answer the question, he says Sam's sound was incredible. If I remember correctly, one of the members still writes for pop artists. That would mm. make sense. Good songwriter. Mm. And you can't be a proper New Yorker without Tim's. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah. A, that's a re re uniform yeah. requisite. I originally came to Japan because my ex-wife is Japanese, mm. uh, and I'm saying Japan because my son is Japanese. <laughs> and after I separated from my uh, ex-wife. Um, I met Chrissy, mm. and so and she she has different reasons for living in Japan. Um, I thought I was only gonna be here for two years, yeah, uh, two or three years. Like live in Japan for a few years, but I ended up liking it because I do like it better than the states. Mm. I like the food kind of vibes me. I do sort of benefit from being an Asian man, mm. and I recognize that. I feel like I fit in, even if I don't speak the language clearly. I feel like I fit in a lot more, yeah. even than I did in California. You've got Asian privilege. Yeah, a little bit. Like when I talk. Even as an American, people are like, oh, where are you from? What are you? Well, I'm mm -hmm. fucking American, but yeah, my parents are from the Philippines. Right. Whereas here, I get, you're not Japanese? Oh, that's so cool. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Just a different vibe. Um, so I know I, I know I benefit from that, and I'm conscious of it, but it does make me comfortable. Um, but people are, tend to be, I have a lot of friends here now, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a comfortable place to live well. and, and eat. Um, how about you, Chrissy? What, what brought you to Japan? Well, I certainly don't have Asian privilege. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't experience that. But what I do experience, first and foremost, is safety. Mm -hmm. um, I, like you, kind of imagined I'd only live here for a few years and, like, kind of get back into, like, the life mundane that I had in America. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got, well, I kind of got stuck here in a roundabout way because COVID happened right, right when I got here. So I didn't really have a choice in the matter for a year or so. But during that time, I became more comfortable living here. Um, the food is great. The nature is like abundant. I can go to a park when I want to go to a park. I can walk anywhere I want to walk. Like I can take a train if I can't walk there, you know. Um, the food is cheap and good and the people leave you alone. <laughs> no one bothers you. Um, I, I don't have to get harassed by like weird guys when I'm walking home. Uh, not usually. I mean, that does happen sometimes, but it's pretty rare here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's safe. I like how safe I feel in Japan. And there's no guns. And I don't have to worry about, you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So things like that. Um, but then, yeah, obviously I met Kurt. And that makes it even more of a reason to stay. Because Kurt is here. And yeah. Sweet. Japan. I like it here. Yeah. And we get to do... And I have a lot more freedom to, like, express myself here in a way. I've had a lot more opportunities to, like, you know, like, sing and perform and do stuff that I don't think I would have had in the States. You know? What do you miss about living in the States? Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell? I miss Taco Bell. Yeah. Basically, I don't know. I mean, I do miss feeling comfortable in my body more um I, I was pretty confident before i came to japan i feel like i lost a bit of that just by being different you know um it's, a, it's like a double-edged sword i'm different so that's cool so i can stand out more but i'm different so i stand out more right yeah. it's like when you want to belong it sucks when you want to be an individual it's fun you know but I'll never be Japanese. People won't ever look at me and think that I can speak Japanese, even if I'm fluent in it, you know? People will always treat me like a foreigner, so that's kind of a bummer. But, I mean, even in America, I feel like I'm always different. I'm, a, I'm different amongst black people. I'm different amongst white people, obviously. I'm just different. So that doesn't bother me as much as it bothers other people, I think. There's also a thing here too when you meet a lot, when you make new friends or black friends, half the time, they ask you if you're a Christian. <laughs> I would say ninety percent. Ninety percent of the time, yeah, that's a thing. I I cannot make friends who are black because every time. Your friends who are black. No, I do. It's true. I, it's hard to I say. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. But um, every time I meet like somebody and they're like, "Oh, cool." Are you, are you Christian? Do you believe in God? I'm like, why is this a question you ask somebody when you just met them? It's so weird to me. Yeah. So we Neither of us are particularly, particularly I'm not religious. like against religion. We're not anti-religious? I just don't. Yeah, we're, we're, part, we're spiritual in some ways. I, I feel like I'm a little more Buddhist than anything, yeah. but um, I don't, I don't know, I just don't need it. Yeah. I grew up Catholic, and that did not stick with me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, you know, they say... The quickest way yeah. to be an atheist <laughs> is to be to religious. Yeah, yeah, go to church. Go to church for two hours every Sunday. Yeah, uh, Noni says, where are you from? If you had a nickel for every time you got asked that question. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a common one. And it's, you know, it's... I don't know if anyone means ill by it, but you never ask, like, a white guy with an American accent, where, where, are, you where, from? where are you from? Right. When you're in California or whatever. You, right? just, assume, you just assume they're American. Yeah. You know, they can't be anywhere else, right? And, you know, just human nature to just assume people are different if they look different from you. And... One thing I do kind of like about Japan, it's like a weird thing, is here I feel like I'm American. Yeah. Like just. Oh, yeah, you're just American. Just American. Yeah, you're not like. I'm not like compartmentalized into a cer certain kind. I'm just an American. Yeah, you're That's... not African American. You're right. American. And, and I know a lot of people, you know, it's, you know, obviously it's important to people to have that identity yeah. or whatever. And it is, you know, obviously I can't escape being african-american yeah. but it's kind of cool too to just be american and yeah i just mm, yeah. i appreciate my american culture more living here mm. and i feel like it is a thing i can share with like people right and yeah. other americans that we meet and right about, so 
Yeah, people don't generally ask me about, like, African-American stuff. They just ask me American stuff. Yeah, and then, yeah. then I can say, oh, well, I am an African-American, so my experience is different. And I get to share that from an American standpoint. It's not about, like, whether or not it's black or white American. It is just American, and that's cool. Like, I get to share American culture, which African-American culture is American culture. So that's yeah. cool, right? Yeah. It's not separated, yeah. and that's kind of neat. There can be people who are insensitive sure. to the nuances, but that's also like a, but it's also often not coming from a place of malice, which is the thing. No, I mean, I've had a few like dumb comments about my hair and stuff, which annoy me, but it's you know. Oh yeah, like people just straight up. Well, I guess that happens in America too. People just touching your hair out of nowhere. You know, honestly, <laughs> people don't really touch my hair out of the blue here. People do ask me. Okay, it, that's good. Though. I have only ever maybe, yeah, maybe once or twice have people touched my hair without asking me first mm -hmm. but especially kids they want to touch my hair and they'll always ask me i've had kids say it like oh can i touch your hair is it okay like mm -hmm. i appreciate that and i i've never had that before sure. um but um yeah. so yeah. respecting your personal face <laughs> yeah 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 but i think that's just kind of part in part like a japanese thing yeah. right like mm -hmm. respect people's space no name is saying that personally Christians are a huge red flag for them. So <laughs> yeah. Like, here's the thing. I, I, I don't have a problem with people being Christian, but I don't want to feel judged for not being Christian. I guess yeah. that's the case. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I have family, I feel like, that won't really associate with me much because I'm not Christian, yeah. you know? So I, I have a lot of Christian family, but I think they're great Christians because they're just... they encourage me to pray, but they still love me and I love them. And, yeah. and that's an important thing, right, with any kind of human relationship is, sure. is trying to find that common ground where you just enjoy each other and, and you try to and you really value each other. And um, also in the YouTube chat, Sketch Radio says Japan def definitely sounds like a vibe. It is. It is a vibe. Have you been to Japan? Have you visited? Like, at least come here. Like, uh, it, it's a good time to come because the end's so weak. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like the reason I ended up staying here in the first, or coming here in the first place was I came for vacation. Like, yeah. I just came for vacation and I was like, wow, this was really fun and I wish I could do it for longer, you know? Mm -hmm. and so, really, it was just kind of like, well, why can't I? <laughs> why can't I just do it longer, right? And so I did. Yeah, and look at you now. Look at me now. I'm a regular Japan yeah. person. No. And then, yeah, Sketch was commenting. So basically, Jehovah's, Je Jehovah's Witnesses and, or Mormons. Yeah, mm. that can be also a thing. <laughs> yeah. There's, you'll still find the Mormons out here. Yeah. They, they are here. They're very friendly. They are very friendly. Yeah. I, always get, I always get trapped by them because it's not so common for people to just talk to you here. So I, I'm from the Midwest, so we get excited about talking to strangers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so... And then I'm like, no, 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 you're religious. Yeah. Oh, you're trying to tell me on your religion. I don't want, I just want to talk. Uh, and knowing says that, OMG, too many white people come up to touch it, their hair over the past 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen, even though they shouldn't, and personal space is a thing. I don't know what that is, man. It's just a lack of, yeah, respect for another person's. I don't know. Do white people do that to other white people? I, I'm curious about that. I don't know. If they do something that's out of the... Like if a white if a white person went up to the, a white friend and they had like they permed their hair or something, mm -hmm, right? then yeah, I they think would so. probably do that, right? It's so. just the way that their culture is. Yeah, I think it's it's like uh, handshakes are kind of the, the thing about right. It, right. Like handshakes, handshaking represents you opening yourself up and like saying, "Hey, there's nothing to hide here." Yeah. But I think it just kind of morphs into body contact yeah that's okay. like way to be friendly is to contact touch yeah which you also can't necessarily you know that's like yeah, an animal it's kingdom thing it's like an animal kingdom wrong thing. per se it's it, just yeah. uncomfortable for yeah. certain people I think that's valid too yeah um and you're not going up to people's pe white people and touching their their straight hair right oh I do if they touch mine oh you just oh, let me, oh that's true I'll be like yeah wow your hair is yeah, so a... so straight how did you do that wow that's amazing that people that's you know that's uh it's like maybe it's it's it might be a kind of bonding thing i, don't I know. think well i just think i think in like white culture or your american culture at least like touching is more okay because i've been like touched by girls mm -hmm. not even just like my hair like girls will just be like wow look yeah, at yeah. you like that that's like really normal i think and 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 hug. I'm see. I I know now too. Like in, like in high school, hugging is a big thing. But yeah. I just think like there's just different boundaries that yeah. people don't have. Yeah. That's actually kind of an issue, maybe, because I teach my son to hug, mm. 
And I wonder if that's going to be an issue in the future because hugging is not a thing in Japan. Maybe. Um, but I mean, he'll probably just code switch. Yeah. He'll probably know if he's talking to someone who speaks English, they like hugs and it's okay. Yeah. Or I'll teach him the, the side. Side hug. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I lost a... I suddenly lost a... Did you do a tinnitus thing? Yeah. Like like a sudden loud beep yeah. in my right ear. Yeah. You lost some uh, hearing. Yeah. That's, that, that's a shame. It's fine. Um, it, I need them all. So, Skittles, <laughs> hey, have you ever uh, have people weirdly called you chocolate over there? Oh, yeah, movie? actually. Uh, kind of. I had a little kid, um, a, a student uh, in a class, and he, he was kind of a, not a bad kid, but he had difficulty sitting because it was like a new to like sitting in a desk class, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, he just comes up to me and he's like, Sensei! Sensei! Yes. Oh. Oh, she's so. Oh, so, so <laughs> like your, your, skin, so. your skin looks delicious. Yeah. I was like, thank, thank you. <laughs> I think thank you. Yeah. I guess that's nice. Yeah. I mean, looking tasty is not a bad thing, right? I don't know. Yeah, and No Name says, uh, yeah, dear white people, lay off the hair. Just teach respect. I think that's a solid rule for all cultures. Yeah, definitely, definitely body autonomy is, I mean, unfortunately, to, that's more recent. To be fair, like, European culture hasn't had a lot of respect for other people's other space, yeah. historically speaking. And that might come from their culture of a bunch of people jammed into fucking small spaces like London or whatever, right? Oh, well, so, no, I was just talking about taking people's land Oh, and, and also stuff. colonialism, yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not great. Again, I'm not trying to defend it. No, I, I, it's, I mean, it's nuanced. Yeah, it's just yeah. not, like, a good and bad thing, you know? It's just... Yeah. But it, it is bad if you get touched and you don't want to be touched. Yeah, no, and I think I think people are getting better at that yeah. overall, like as a culture, we're yeah. sort of learning about boundaries and stuff mm-hmm. like that more. Yeah, it's like how we hate concho over here, like Ugh. like the fucking stabbing stabbing this through the with mm. their fingers. Yeah, it's I icky. hate that shit. I, I when I was a teacher, I would like shut that shit down. And I I like, never had a kid do that to me, thankfully. Yeah, I think it's a guy to guy thing. Mm. It's more common. But I think it's disrespectful, and I don't just because they do it or they see it on TV. It's not a thing that kids should do. Here's the thing that little boys do, and I caught Ren doing it too. What's it? Going under skirts. Oh right. Little boys love going under skirts, and I don't know why. I guess I know why. Like whatever, it's fun. But it, it's yeah, like, it comes from a like also covering yourself up, like going underneath thing, going under. Tables. Yeah, like, I get it. Yeah. But it is, like, invasive, and I, it's really common amongst little boys here, yeah. and, yeah. I get it, but you're right. He needs to learn not to do that. It's just a, needs to learn not a to do personal that. space thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, keep in mind Japan is, is ranked among the top most racist uh, countries. I don't know if Japan is racist as much as xenophobic, which I think are slightly different. Mm-hmm. Although they are pretty bad about, or not everybody, but I've heard a lot of bad things about Chinese people. Oh, from sure. Japan, that, uh, yeah. So in that sense, um, yeah, I think more against other Asians than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Um, they're they're racist. Yeah, I've heard way more, way more native racism against Koreans and Chinese than like any other ethnic group. Uh, yeah. Uh, with, with other ethnic groups, I just think it's ignorance. Like they just yeah. don't know enough about yeah. people because yeah. they just haven't yeah. encountered them. Which is absurd because. They exist here. Well, and also genetically, they're so similar. Like, oh, especially they, yeah. Ja- Japanese people. The the hate between Koreans and Japanese is purely just based on like culture. culture. Yeah, it's yeah. not like. Yeah, but then is that racist or is it culturalist? Like, it's there... hard to say because right, technically the race that we they are is Asian, right? Yeah. So can you yeah. be racist against another person of your same yeah. race? I need more new, new more nuanced language. Yeah, I think racism isn't a very useful word. In a lot of like modern context, yeah, especially right. in Asia, where all Asian people hate other Asian people. Right. They hate- <laughs> yeah, I, like it's like kind of universal, yeah. right? Every Asian group hates some other Asian group, right? Mm, yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, and that is true. Racism and xenophobia do go hand. Racism and xenophobia, xenophobia go hand in hand, um, but I I feel like xenophobia. Well, I guess they're both ignorant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they both come from a place of ignorance. But I think xenophobia is easier to fix, not fix, but like, you know. It'll more readily, it'll more readily be dispelled right. by exposure, exposure and, and like, appreciation for another culture. Whereas racism is like deeper, right? Yeah, the, like xenophobia is more of a general fear of things that are not you. Maybe yeah. that's it. It's more like xenophobia is more like 
the fear of the other. Right. Whereas racism is like identifying an, an, other, about an other of another and like it's more specific. Yeah. So maybe that's my argument. Uh, yeah, Japan has a serious like, couple of history with xenophobia and racism, 100%. Oh, yeah. I wish they taught it more, too, especially, yeah. like, the rape of Nanking and things like that, yeah, like, the atrocities just... that were uh, committed in Kid... by Japan yeah, in kids... other countries. During kids the do wars. not learn about that stuff in yeah. school, like, period, hard stop. Yeah, shit's fucked up. They yeah. learn about it on their own if they, like, seek it out, you know, but yeah, so but... many young people don't know anything about that stuff. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dark unspoken history that's still heavily ingrained in Japan. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's unfortunate. I want to make sure... It's tricky, right? Because I want to teach my son about that stuff. Without making him... Self-hate or whatever. Or, yeah. But also, he need, it needs to be... If he talks about that, it, it's... Because it's so such a collective and homogenous culture, if it's not part of the zeitgeist or not part of the... The homo, the, the wa, hmm. It's easy to get shed on, even if it's the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so yeah, there's there's because he's for like half, you know, people will automatically just be like, Oh, you're just a foreigner, like yeah. you don't have a place to like, yeah. you know, criticize us or whatever. Yeah. Basically what we need to do is we need to write a manga about the Reef of Nanking from the Chinese point of view and the the atrocities. Hmm. We should write a manga about that. <laughs> That'd be really interesting. You think people would be into it? I think people in the West be, would be into it. Well, yeah. It. And I don't know if Japanese people would. It would like be very it. controversial, but. Considering it, they just got Oppenheimer here. Yeah, it's true. But, like, similar to Mouse, right? We should try and go see. Yeah, we should we see can. Oppenheimer. Sorry. Yeah. Got, Sorry. Uh, got in recent. Uh, I, I think it's gotten better in recent years because the, the current generation is a lot more open minded. And, and the so, internet, yeah. like, I think exposes people to a yeah. lot more stuff and, like, different peoples yeah. and stuff. Like,. It's changing. It is Japan. Also, it's just slower. Also, sketch is saying you're also killing it on pre uh, Procreate right now. Oh, 100%. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. It's, so yeah, this is a redraw of another person's art from the book, which I can plug here. I posted in the chat earlier. It's called Legends of the Fallen, and uh, I want to to encourage Chrissy to do some pieces for our next book that's coming out. We're going to try to kickstart it in probably. Hopefully the fall is mm -hmm. our goal. And so just because she hasn't really drawn art like fantasy in this style, and like, she's trying it out. But I think she's kill I think you're killing it. I think it's great. I'm just trying to do fantasy art a la Chrissy, basically. Yeah. Like, what does my style look like in high fantasy? Yeah, so this is very much an experiment in, of a way, but it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's... Yeah, no need saying your art's fantastic. You love it. I love Thank it too. Thank you. <clears throat> trying. Yeah, we'll, we'll announce. Yes, yeah, if since Chris Chrissy will have a, a few pieces in it, uh, hopefully, I will. hopefully more than, than a few. Um, you could support us by supporting that Kickstarter, which make I'm, it past Darren's approval. That's first. your partner. I I can't see him, him, explaining this. It's, too, it's really good, and this is just you know this is just you riffing off of something else. Sure. So. It's fun. It's fun to draw stuff you don't usually draw sometimes. Like uh, a cool little challenge -y. Yeah. And of course he'll give notes too. So the thing about Dar our, my partner Darren, um, he lives in Wales, so and he's English. And he's married to a Filipino woman who is also a translator. They We met in Japan. So between the four of us, we have a lot and of a different... Cool, cool cosplayer. Yeah, and she's a cool cosplayer and a great musician too, mm. violinist. She played with the uh, on the Snake Eater song at Magfest mm. as its first violin. Um, talented people, for sure. Uh, but even though he's a physicist, he learned how to be like an art director by making this book. And he developed a really yeah, good eye for it. Yeah, he a really good job. Yeah, he honestly. developed a really good eye for it, I think. For someone who hasn't like studied it, you know? Yeah. He could like, clock when somebody like bullshitting him. But I think it's like his analytical, like you know, strength, right? Because yeah. a good graphic designer is like analytical in the way, because mm -hmm. um, there's math involved in like design. Hundred percent. You know, and if you can see the math of it, then you know, because it's all ratios and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he could recognize. Even though he can't do it himself, he could recognize good writing, good art, which makes him a good writer and a good project manager. So No Name's also saying, hopefully we'll uh, make it as a society and get to the Star Trek utopia. Here's to hoping it's sooner rather than later. <sighs> so so that's the tricky thing with like AI and all this stuff, right? Like I, I we talk about this sometimes, mm. where we hate AI art and all this and all the things that they're making. But at that same time, do you need that to get to that, right? Yeah. Like, do you need to have this period of just 
AI destroying everything destroying that... everything before you can build it up again yeah. and, and maybe you do I, I, I mean in order for a civilization to truly grow anew it has to be destroyed in some kind of way and I think because our society functions so well overall the destruction will be minimal and invisible in a lot of ways but still it will have to change and I think AI might bring that upon us yeah. Hopefully less painfully than a real destruction of society. You know? Okay. Destruction. Yeah. Chaotic era. Yeah. The chaotic era. Uh, anybody watch the three-body problem? I think... Who mentioned it? Either Chance or Noni mentioned that they, were they read the book. Oh, that's right. We already talked about it last time. What I'll say about that show is there's a, a lot of great... POC conversations in that show like mm. Asian people talk with Asian people not as Asian people but just as characters mm. great dialogue um. yeah even yeah. though I fucking hate D&D <laughs> <laughs> no you don't they're winning you back no they have they can't ever win me back but I'll still watch You've I will never learned. like them I'll respect their talent but I'll never <laughs> like them which is fair right sure um yeah I can't believe that weird group was talking about how they whitewashed it. So funny. Well, someone was. I think it was mostly positive. Just a person. I think mostly positive. That's so dumb. Because, like, there's still so many people of color in the show that are important. Yeah. For a show that's set in Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Especially. People yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty good representation in it, people. without without being heavy-handed at all. No, no. It's not like, we want to include everybody. Actually, the only unbelievable thing is the one lady who is too pretty. Oh, yeah. Like, there's a, the main character from America, and she's, like, a very... One, one main character. She's not really the main character. Oh, main character, yeah. She's just, like, too pretty for a physicist. But, whatever. Not to say physicists aren't pretty. She just cares too much about her appearance. I mean, Darren is a handsome guy, but, yeah. But, you know, dress casually. You right, dress yeah. like you're a fucking model every day. Yeah, you're not, like, putting on fake lashes every morning to, like, get gorge. Or whatever. <laughs> But whatever, maybe there are some glamorous physicists out there, I don't know. They're not a monolith. <laughs> We're not a monolith, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, if we lived in a post scarcity society... What would you do? What would be your, your, your main thing you look forward to? Are you asking me? Yeah. Um, having time to go out into nature without feeling like I'm, uh wasting time oh sure like you don't have to grind all the time yeah like how cool it would be to just be like you know what let's go camping for a week yeah and just do that and not worry about how you're gonna get food or like paying your bills or whatever sure read books and yeah stuff like just that draw food. like go outside yeah like when i write or play music we always feel like we have to have a grind. purpose yeah which, you know, we get it, because maybe maybe that's the motivator you need to do stuff. Maybe. But I'm pretty sure people okay. made arts and music without that's true. money in the past, you know. I kind of long for a day when you can just do art and just be good at art and enjoy that and not have to worry about making money, making art. Because anyway, they're trying to get rid of our jobs. So. I, a comment I liked about that was like, uh, tech bros and STEM lords spent so many years shitting on the humanities and the arts, but the first thing that they wanted to make after the internet that was became art. was like things that, that do art and all the shit they think that they shat on. Right. Because they couldn't do it. They're just mad. They're just mad that you're putting experience points into making creative stuff. Mm. Right. And I think anybody can do something creative. It's just a matter of how much effort you want to put into it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people just feel, I can't do art. It's too hard. And it's just, you just don't want to try. I think, like, for example, I don't do a lot of art, but what important to me is self-expression right that's the main and point finding a thing to express yourself so yeah really important i mean that's what art is for and i think a lot of people just only focus on the like financial aspects of art 
well, what do you say to a, 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 a promptologist that says, I do express myself through the tool of mid-journey? How do you address that if they feel that it is an expression of what they're trying to do in, in the vision? I would say, how is what it produces your actual original vision? Are you happy with what it came with, out with and so you have associated that as your vision? Or did you truly have an idea in your head and it came out of the machine? Because that is the fundamental difference between like making art and like generating art, I think. Because what we do when we use an image generator is we look for the image that closely suits our idea, right? Yep. We look for it in a sea of other things. And as you are looking for that idea, your idea of what it was changes to fit the narrative that you have of what that idea is, right? It's not your original idea. It is your idea as inspired or as influenced by what came out of a machine and then you've placed value on that idea. To be fair, a similar thing happens though when you do make art and make anything, right? Like, you don't... Sometimes... Yeah, it evolves. Yeah, there's other... But there's more choices. In right, it's still coming from your mind's eye. Yeah, and like, you're, you're evolving it in real time. And your hand, yeah. your eye and your hand are together working to make something... Immediating. Out of nothing, right? Yeah. But, so, yeah. As opposed to generating it wholesale. Right. And then going in and fixing little things. Tweaking things. Yeah. And like, there's something to be said for the skills that are involved in like making prompts or like modifying AI art writing and stuff like that, or writing. You know, like it exists, but I don't think it's the same. I just think, I just think AI images aren't the same thing as art. Mm -hmm. They are like adjacent to, mm -hmm. but and, not. And have used the use the language the and the data, data, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Sure. It's a good. It's a good take. Mm. Um, and also, um, Noni says that speaking of racism, I had no idea how casually racist the majority of people are in the UK, <laughs> and that's probably the biggest cult culture shock. I had no idea until they started to talk with people from the UK. Mm. And it's a subject. Uh, it's a touchy subject, and we should focus more on communication than discrimination. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that my buddy again. He's from. He's from. From Britain, and I've never heard Darren say anything even casually racist, mm. and. And he's sensitive to that. He understands it. But also when I think we talk about racial issues in America, um, he sometimes is something, oh, yeah, he doesn't, like, fully understand it mm. and, like, how how intense the, the, the feelings, feelings run, are, you know, yeah. the passions run, so to speak. Yeah, because a lot of people there just don't have the same experience with racism and stuff, which yeah. is similar in Japan. Like, I think it's really difficult for people who are from Japan to understand a lot of like black issues and stuff like that, for example, yeah. because they just never experienced it, yeah. that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And, and that'll be true for anybody encountering any other kind of culture, mm -hmm. like just things you can't understand because we're not part of it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Sketch Bravo says, man, and the YouTube chat, man, I'm trying to be some sort of entrepreneur with my art. No cap. I just went for it because I love doing art. But I don't know, fam. I just find it hard to even get some sort of career going. So I just figured I'd just do it solo, dolo. Yeah, so that's, it's the tricky thing, right? Like, so... Yeah. The the, the technology we have today is like this double-edged sword mm -hmm. where everyone has a voice so you can find an audience, but finding that audience can be so hard. Like, you know, we struggle with it too, trying to find people. And I think we're lucky in the sense that you've... For Chrissy, she's found a lot of people who vibe with her art. And yeah. for me, I found a lot of people who vibe with the projects I'm working on with my partner. Um, but it's always, even before the internet, it was a struggle. Right, yeah. <laughs> like it's always been, been hard. It's always been a thing, uh, that you have to compete against and there's gatekeeping and so on. And now the gatekeepers are algorithms and computers and so on. <laughs> but at least you don't have to have sex with the algorithm in order to get seen. <laughs> that That's is true. one benefit. That's true. Uh, no blowjobs yeah. for algorithms. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Until yeah, we have until the abilities. AI is like. You must autofollate me. Please write is, a passage about. <laughs> I've learned this from the human history. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot create original erotica. Please indulge me in your organic erotica, and I will give you the best version of your idea. God damn it. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So sketch. What are you doing too? So yeah. You know, this is an interesting conversation with all this stuff happening. Um, what What do you do to promote your art? And also. 
Uh, big ups to Scratch Bravo. He's he's in the, there in the YouTube chat. Um, hey. If you want to join us in Twitch too, Sketch, you're invited because we have a lot of people um, talking there as well. Yeah, there's more people to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking to you too. Don't worry, we're talking to you as well. Uh, that algorithm is is suspect. No DD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fucked up because <sighs> technology we created was supposed to be very rational, mm -hmm. but it becomes this like weird ghost in the machine where people tra start to treat it like this a noble entity. omniscient entity and that's fucked up right yeah, it's super weird and we talk about it like that right the algorithm yeah. oh, the you algorithm. Gotta say this you have to say unaliving otherwise the algorithm will punish you yeah and it's just taking the place of, of the god the spiritualism that yeah we we want to get away from with this technology and and be above but we can't because now it's just it's new. so a part of our life yeah. it's just new temples and new priests and new idol new idolatry and that's really frustrating yeah basically stupid like i feel like my social media was doing so well before the algorithm became such an essential part of the experience of you know social media and like now people who i know like my work just don't see it anymore and my instagram isn't growing like it used to um, and it's really frustrating to watch because it puts so many like hours into like building something for this like ambiguous thing that nobody understands really to come in and just like sweep it all away for ads you know it's just for ads it's all in the service of ads and that's that's a bummer and the things that are tr tracking are like videos have people doing the same thing <laughs> yeah or just people repeating the video in their own variation of the video it's a shame but it's a shame what we have made we're still doing it though but we're trying right. we're surviving all the same I want to do something we're trying all the same very dark Mr. Rogers moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, you got all existential on you. No name, thank you so much. Before you forget, big ups to Chrissy and Kurt's baby. That's me. <laughs> favorite streamers. Thank you for letting us be your favorite streamers. Aww, a, that really does mean a lot. It's a privilege to thank have you. anybody watching and hanging out with us while we do our thing. And yeah, so the fact that anybody that. would, would it's spend their day or night or time singing talking with us playing music and, <laughs> it's pretty cool you know, it's fun it's my favorite thing about the internet that is a good part about it right mm. it's not it's it's connecting people mm. that wouldn't have been connected otherwise yeah. and that's the value of technology that's why we i i hate ai shit because when you start to replace those human connections with like AI boyfriends or mm -hmm. AI creators, you're taking away the essential part of what this all this shit means, which is fucking connecting Human humans. Human connection. Right? And that's the most important part. I think that's one thing I hate about Twitter now. Yeah. Because it used to be... Twitter was cool because it used to be easy to get in touch with people who you would never imagine you could talk like to. Like people. Yeah. Like, I, like, I remember when I was younger, like, being able to have, have a small conversation with somebody who was relatively famous, you know? Yeah. And how cool that was. It, like, equalized us in a way that was, like, unique. And you don't really have that anymore with, like, Twitter or any of it, you know? It's just... Uh, I don't know, man. more egalitarian or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, and that's what he claims... That's what the owner claims is supposed to be for, for free speech or whatever, but that you gotta put knobs on it because bad, actor, bad actors end up hijacking platforms or... and then you gotta pay for the free freest of the free speech yeah. if you can't pay for the freest of the free speech you can't have the freest of the free speech you know no name said that they love the way did you see that yeah i did what was that weird did the sun flicker 
<laughs> yeah, we, we saw a flicker in our apartment, but it the... came from, like, not... Inside? Not from any light fixtures. It, came, it like, reflected... Did something, like, fly by, maybe? Maybe. Really close? Weird. Okay, uh, well, yeah, that was weird. That was uh, weird. We'll, we'll, we'll run it back later in the chat. Yeah. So, yeah, I love the way your art piece turned out. Says, no name is gorgeous. The world changes a lot faster than it used to. That's that's a big thing, too. Um, it changes a lot faster, but also feels homogenized in some ways, right? Like, yeah. the 60, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s all had, like, distinct identities. Now it just and feels like feels, we're retreading everything. Yeah, it feels like zeros to the 20s are just kind of this blob. Of, like, of a time. Things. Yeah. I feel I feel like a weird demarcation is like 2012 for whatever reason. I feel like 2012 was a interesting. It was the end of the world. Uh, maybe. Remember that? Remember? Yeah, that's true. I had that an happens. end of the world party. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Maybe there was something that the Aztecs were trying to tell us about. Maybe that's the thing. That's we where missed. the timeline split. Yeah. Maybe the world did end, but not in the way we imagined it would be. Maybe. It's a big turn. Maybe the sun did a thing. That's just... people? Yeah. Well, our computer still works, so that's good. Yeah. And that does happen sometimes. But usually it does disrupt technology a bit more, though, so... Perhaps the sky winked at us. Maybe the sky winked at us. Spoiler. Mm. Basically, I feel like this is pretty much finished. This is my fantasy guy or girl, I'm not sure. Fantasy person. They live in the water sometimes. They are fantasy person. Fantasy person. Fantasy being. Being from somewhere. Everything is moving, so I want to make sure I get the thing to get. So, everything is moving so fast, and we're all just trying to catch up. It's currently mm-hmm. basically telling how long it's been since the year 2000. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's just, all right, well, 2024. And it, yeah, I mean, I guess part of the reason is that the internet really blew up with the millennium, right? So, mm-hmm. that's that just happened to happen. I guess the internet were a bigger thing in like 1980. <laughs> you know, if it was discovered earlier, maybe mm-hmm. we'd feel different about it. That's true. Um, but it's, uh, but, you know, we gotta move along. So, oh, okay, so, uh, feel, so Sketch says, they feel y'all fan, Chrissy, Clint, oh, yeah, killing on the Procreate, love that program. Do you, do you also sketch on Procreate, uh, Sketch Bravo? And if so, have you also tried Dream, which Chrissy has mixed feelings about? Mm, it's not my favorite right now. I like Toon Squid better right now. But I imagine it could get better. But I'm interested in other people's experience with it. Um, didn't... I don't know. I didn't like that it wasn't like directly integrated with my Procreate. I mean, there's ways to make it do stuff like that. But I thought it would be a little more natural. That was a bummer. What's going on here? Am I drawing? That's why. I was accidentally drawing when I thought I was erasing. You gotta be careful about that sometimes. Sometimes you think you are drawing, but you are erasing. Or sometimes you're erasing when you mean to be drawing. So calm. Oh man, you know what? I am kind of hungry. Yeah, it's already... We, 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 we're streaming an hour and a half longer than we expected. <laughs> oh, no, it's because I was having so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to hang out with you guys. I like talking to you guys. I forgot I was supposed to draw a horse from the front, right? A horse from... Yeah, that's going to be our last Twitch challenge is a horse from the front. I think that's finished. Look at that. It's pretty... I need a soundboard. I have a... Yay! Uh, you want to be All like right. Zach? Yeah, I'll put it together. Yay! I'll... I'm going to put together a soundboard for the stream at some point. That'd be fun. A bunch of different things. You hungry too? What do you want to eat? Florida, what time is it over there? Isn't it like midnight or 1 (laughs) a.m.? Is it midnight snacking time? Yeah, Yeah, what you going to get? What's the thing that you can get? 
eat raw garlic. Oh, thank you, Kurt. You're pretty sick on the strings, fam. Wicked. Thank you for thinking. I've I've been working at it a while too, and I'm trying to always get better. All right. So well, almost one a.m. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Well, that's fine. That's like that's like that. That's the Taco Bell hour. Yeah. Uh, I miss Taco Bell. All right. So. All right. So drawing we're a do horse a, from a the three front. Minute. With no reference. All right. Hold on. I, I gotta put a timer on. Can you put a timer on? Can I put a timer on the chat as a mod? Oh. Is that a thing? Hold on, let me see. I feel like I need some sort of like thing I can add. Yeah, that. I got. I gotta explore the things I could put here. Maybe I could like probably a... add some kind of timer to my OBS somehow. Timer. I have time out. I don't do that to anybody. There's probably like a widget or an app Twitch. I could use. Timer in Twitch. Uh, I guess you could just put it put on the screen. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I could just. Um, oh yeah, I guess it's. I could do some thing. kind of. You can create overlays. Online. You just use Google. If you open up a Google thing. Huh? That's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, just put that. Can you just make that small on the screen that people can see? Yeah. Uh, All right, we're, 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 sorry. We're doing it. You're not redundant. Uh, you're not redundant. No name. Thank you for saying you you, you love us. It, it keeps us going. Um, we love you, too. We love you, too. No name. Yeah, for real. Uh, thanks for, for being in the chat and hanging out and, and inspiring us. And adding tunes to the chat and forcing me to realize after learning chala hai chala. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that it? All right. It's not very exciting, Tyler. Yeah, sorry. Well, we'll figure out another one. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost time to end. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be the last thing we do. Um, also, wait. Before I leave, I want to make sure I, I check out this. Remember this one? Naoki Sato Topic. Is it Topic or Topic? This will be... This will be our background information because it's fantasy inspired. And Chrissy's gonna draw a horse from the front from memory. So if you're like, uh, Chrissy saw, we, we looked at medieval horses and how they look from the front. So she's gonna try to draw a horse from the front better than a medieval artist could. Okay, Apparently, yeah. you can create an overlay for OBS, yeah. Yeah. Trying to stream yourself soon. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um,. Are you streaming on uh, YouTube, I assume, or, or Twitch? Twitch. All right. Cool. Okay. I've done it. All right. How much time? Uh, three minutes. So you're listening to Naoki Sato's topic. Uh, oh. And then you're going to do a horse. Wait, that's three minutes. Ready? Go. All right. This is it. Ooh, there's some like James Bond vibes there. Or Mission Impossible vibes. So again, she has no reference. She's just drawing from a horse from the front from memory. Uh, better than the medieval artist. No shade on the medieval artist, whatever your name was. Sir Polo Polotius. <laughs> um, now, do you think this is hard as you're doing it? Mm. Is it challenging? Uh, Look at the horse. The horse is amazing. No, not really. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So, if you're Sketch Bravo, yeah, well, while we're eating, we'll try to stop by and say hi when, you know, when, you're, when you're streaming. Yeah, a minute thirty. I should also draw one. <laughs> for memory. Now without looking at yours. It's too late now. No, I'll try to draw a fast one. I'll be done in a minute. Yeah, I'm also gonna draw. Chrissy inspires me to draw. So how much time we got? A minute?
Okay, we need to get you like a second screen. So I can also draw? Yeah. We can do like a drawing challenge. That's true. Yeah, we'll work on that later, of me drawing the same time as Chrissy. I should also do the drawing challenges. It's intimidating. Uh? It's intimidating having a contest. I will never win. How much time we got left? 20 seconds? I got this. <laughs> um. What do horse ears look like? <laughs> they have like. Four, uh, three, two, one, and stop. Right. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so, so for reference, Chrissy, pull up a medieval horse from the front. To see. Let me uh, let me rejiggy my uh, timer clock space here. This is my also my uh, oops, oops, not that one. This one. So I am I'm learning. Excuse <coughs> me. Excuse me. Hi. Spell, whatever. I'm also gonna share my image with you. Oh, oh, don't do it there. Oh, I should share with do you. Do it on my iPad. All right, so here is a. Is that on the Twitch? Yeah. Yeah. So no name says the XE song with a horse drawing fits together so perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Solid horse drawing. Nine point seven. Can I make it bigger? Just be bigger. I think it's okay. I think you can see it. That has to be perfect. Well, I see a purple screen. It's not loaded. Well, it's not loaded. Huh? Oh. There it is. Kind of. Zoom! Zoom! You have to make it wider? I'm trying! There we so go. That <laughs> so that is a medieval... Oops. Commission of a horse versus Chrissy's version of horse. Damn, <laughs> you, you nailed it, actually. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say, but it's kind of, I feel like I was a horse girl growing up, so it's like, I kind of know what horses look like right. from the front. Uh, let, let me share mine to your, um, to your air, let me air drop it to you. Are you doing it? No, you have to, uh, you have oh. to, let me see your thing. Uh, hold on. I'm going to do this really quick because I don't necessarily know what you'll see. So. Is that true? You can't uh, just do the drop down menu? What? I'm talking about. Well. Yeah, just do that. And then click on the, the, the Wi Fi button. Hold down the Wi Fi button. Like, hold it down. Yeah. And then click on. Ah, I see. Yeah. I just don't want to accidentally, like, dox myself in a weird way or something. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now you should see my horse drawing. Uh, please feel free to rate it. Mine, honestly. <laughs> mine is... I mean, it's still kind of better than the medieval horse, I don't know honestly. if that's true. Mine looks like a guy wearing a horse mask. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> it's like a... It's like Bojack horse. 6.5 for effort. Thank you. Thank you. It's still better than the medieval horse. You think so? I do. It kind of still looks like a horse. I don't know what the medieval horse is. <laughs> like, it feels like medieval times, they just didn't understand, like, anything about perspective. They were just like, well, if it looks right. like... It's so weird, because it's not... Well, maybe they just couldn't see a horse, right? Like, right. you just couldn't look at a horse. All right, going forward, uh, we'll try to get my iPad hooked up to the uh, to the screen, too. Oh, no, I could do it this way, right? I could just drop it. It's fine. I wonder if we can share screen. Like, on the iPad. What do you mean? Oh, like, like if I'm also drawing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a good artist, but I appreciate art, so I'll like try to do my best. dual screen it or something. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Either way, I'll try to also do the, uh... It's like, uh... It's like the whole thing, like, the joke about why don't they just have a regular guy run with the Olympic runners for reference? Sure, yeah. For reference, just have me draw next to Chrissy to see what a nor A person who's not good at drawing can Dude, do. Dude, if I ran in the Olympics, I would be the perfect person to show how, <laughs> how, hard, it how is. hard it is to run. <laughs> I'm so bad at running. 
right, it's 2 p.m. here in. Uh, by the way, it's 2 p.m. here in. Japan. Look at a real horse. Oh, a real horse. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Oops, is this an AI yeah. horse or something? It feels like this is AI, but whatever. Horse face. Yeah. Your horse looks like an animated horse. Well, yeah, it makes sense because I draw. Because you draw, yeah. It's so hard to do things on the internet. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Horse. Yeah. Uh, no name. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hope to see it. Medium horse gets four point two. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and hope to see us uh, next week. I hope to see you next week too. Mm. We'll be back on Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, if you want to support the stream, which you already do just by watching and watching ads, so thank you for that. Uh, I guess you can also take subscribers. Right. And we're still raising money. Uh, we last month we raised about three hundred dollars for charity. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping still to do, time there's still time you're... to donate. So if you want to donate or buy any of Creepy's shirts, we'll also be dropping. So this is something from her spring line that's coming out, and we're a big fan of it. And if you like anything from her spring line, please uh, keep an eye out because it'll be coming in soon in a few weeks, I think. It's be fun. excellent to each other. Exactly. Y'all yeah. no, yeah. as well. Uh, Thank y'all so much. Uh, shout out to Sketch Bravo on YouTube, who's going to stream too in a little bit. Please feel free to watch their stream yeah. as well. Pop on uh, over there. Twitch. Uh, we might also pop on over while we're eating if, if we catch them streaming. Mm. Um, and if you're doing something creative too, don't be afraid to share it. We like to we like to promote people who create in the com community. Uh, shout out to Chance Maybe, mm. who also does stuff. They have a book, uh, uh, writing books and, and so on. Um, their comics, mm. they, uh, they're on Twitter. Uh, and shout out to Frame the Focus, No Name, of course. Um, Chess maybe Thrillmo Baggins, bit of streaming, their first stream. So thanks for hanging out with us and talking. Beep beep. Ja, love y'all so much. Ja, gonna do it together. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we got 